Check, check. Testing.
And we have a start to our first race here, the Men's Collegiate Varsity 8 in lane one, UC San Diego.
And it looks like we have Lewis and Clark here rounding out the top six. There we go. Nice finish to Lewis and Clark there. Championships. This will be the women's collegiate varsity eight for Division One and open program. We've got five boats on the course, uh, four boats on the course actually, in lane one, University of San Diego, lane two, Sacramento State, lane three, University of Portland, and lane four, Santa Clara. start here to this women's varsity eight division one and open programs open meaning that it could be a club program but we do have four varsity programs here on the water and right now with the early lead just by about a bout deck will be sacramento state so sacramento state shooting out of the starting blocks with a very clean start all boats now approaching 250 on just behind sacramento state it will be university of san diego rowing out of lane one and behind them by about one seat in third place, University of Portland. Just off the back by a little bit of open water in fourth, it will be Santa Clara. Crews now approaching 500 meters gone. Sac State still holding on to that lead, now extending out by four seats. I have them clocked at 36 and a half strokes a minute. Just behind them, University of San Diego. Very patient here. I have them a little bit lower, 35 and a half. But as Sacramento State continues to inch away from University of San Diego, hot on their heels is University of Portland. So still a lot of tension here between these top three crews. And Santa Clara just a little bit off the back, now by about a length and a half of open water.
this race is a great preview for the Western Conference Championships that will be coming up in a couple of weeks here again at Lake Natoma. San Diego, Portland, and Santa Clara will meet again. So this is a good test to see exactly where they're at speed-wise and then see how much improvement they can make in those next couple of weeks. But Sacramento State still holding on to that lead. They now have a five-seat advantage over University of San Diego in lane one. San Diego now with a full boat length over Portland, but again, still connected. The Broncos of Santa Clara rowing cleanly, just not quite able to match the speed of these top three boats. As they all approach 1,000 meters gone, it will be the top three crews that advance to the grand finals. And right now it looks like Sac State, University of San Diego, and Portland will be those top three crews. At the halfway point, we'll turn it back over to Whitney. And it looks like not too, too much has changed here. Sac State and University of San Diego are very, very close here. Again, I'm going to give a two-seat, maybe a three-seat advantage just by a hair to Sac State in lane two. But University of San Diego is definitely trying to dig in a little bit, and it looks like they're almost bow ball to bow ball now, even just in the time that I was telling you that update. So we'll see where this goes here. This is going to be a very exciting race between lanes one and two right along the shore. We should see them coming up in 30 seconds or so. Pretty close. Followed by University of Portland back there and Santa Clara. Just a little ways back here, a little bit of open water between lane three and uh, lane two here. That's Sac State. But... It looks like now University of San Diego is starting to edge out Sac State, and we should start to see them. You can see those oars glinting in the sunlight in the morning here. So, so beautiful right on the water. This is great racing weather. University of San Diego just edging out Sac State here. Maybe a two-seat advantage, but Sac State's not going to let them off the hook that easily. And here we go. You can see those coxswains starting to lean in a little bit. They're kind of getting to that point where they have to decide within the last 500 meters where to take their crews. Sac, St Sac State here, pardon me, still rowing nice and long here. They're very, very composed. So even though University of San Diego is edging them out just a little bit, maybe three seats here. They're sitting up, they're confident, they're long in the water, still getting out of those puddles. So they've really composed themselves here in lane two. That's really a testament to that coxswain keeping them nice and calm and very collected in the race here, in their own race, as University of San Diego tries to hold them off here in lane one along the shore. Now, this is really a great race. Coming into the last 250 here, you can see Sac State kind of trying to reel them in. They are so close, but they have to kind of sit up and dig in just a little bit, even though they should both be, uh, be moving on to that next, um, that next final. But still, a race for lanes and pride here. Lane one, University of San Diego, about three, maybe four seats now. They are really sitting up trying to take it here. Sac State... Digging in, really trying to hold them off. This is a fun duel. University of Portland here sitting up, finishing up their sprint in that third place position with about a boat and a half length open water. And I'm going to give University of San Diego the win on that one, followed by lane two, Sac State. What a race. Followed by lane three, University of Portland. And Santa Clara here will be rounding out our first heat.
right, and we're actually starting a bit early here in heat two of the Women's Collegiate Varsity Eight Division One and Open programs. Again, we have four boats on the course. In lane one will be Stanford. Lane two, UC San Diego. Lane three, St. Mary's. And lane four, Seattle University. And as all these races are seated, you'll find the fastest crews generally in lane one and then progressing through two, three, and four. And that's basically how we're gonna find them right now. Your leader will be Stanford coming out of lane one. These, this is the lightweight program. So this is interesting in terms of this race. We've got Stanford Lightweights, University of San Diego, a fairly new division one program. They did transition from division two into division one. We've got St. Mary's, an WCC program, and then Seattle University out of the Western Athletic Conference. So we'll find a good connection here as we approach 500 meters gone, but Stanford Lights with your lead now by about six seats. University of San Diego, the Tritons just behind them with a five seat lead over St. Mary's and St. Mary's five seats over Seattle. seeing a lot of patience and poise coming out of the Stanford boat. They now have broke free and have about two seats of open water. Cox looking behind her and urging her crew on to inch away as they approach 750 meters on. They just continue to take even more space between themselves and UC San Diego. Now UC San Diego also a little bit more aggressive here in terms of the stroke rate. I have them clocked at 37 strokes a minute. It's bowed astern for them over St. Mary's College. St. Mary's seeing a coaching change in the last couple of years and looking at generating a little bit more speed than they have in the past, doing a really nice job here. Still connected to UC San Diego, but looking at a challenge from Seattle University. At the halfway point, it will be the Cardinal with their bow first across that marker. 37 and a half strokes a minute for Stanford. And then here is UC San Diego, also 37 strokes a minute. Real tight racing here though, between St. Mary's and Seattle University to see who's going to lock into that third place position for a spot in the grand finals. We'll turn it over to Whitney at the finish line for the last half of this race. And as we look at this beautiful shot here from the drones, it looks, uh, Adrian really said it here, poised from the Stanford boat here in lane one. I mean, they are the clear leader here by a few boat lengths, maybe two and a half, three boat lengths, and just walking away, just cruising down this first place, uh, in this first place position in lane one. And that will be followed again by UC San Diego in lane two also looking really poised these women look so composed here in these positions just so so confident long and you can see those blades just again glinting on the surface of that water as they come down the shore here we should start to see them very shortly and it looks like saint mary's here is still connected still bows uh bow and deck excuse me bow and stern decks overlapping here as we come into about the last 500, almost at that 500 mark, followed by Seattle University, who is also still connected. But again, along the shore here, 
crossing that 500 to go mark is Stanford. And you can see that bucket seat in the middle that they have set up there. And they are just confidently rowing. I mean, look at the poise in this boat. It's really beautiful. I think they can feel pretty confident that they have that first place position. But again, you never know. Again, lane two, that is UC San Diego. A bit of open water there behind them, but we still have a race between lanes two, University of San Diego, lane three, St. Mary's, and lane four, Seattle University. And as we come into those red buoys here, you're going to see Stanford start to sit up just a little bit taller. Looks like they may not go for a full sprint here, hard to say, but they are pretty confidently in that first place position right here along the shore. We'll see if their coxswain takes them through a full sprint here. Looks like they are sitting up. Shortening up just a teeny, teeny bit here, digging in to see if they can secure their first place spot here into that final. And that looks like we are followed by lane two, UC San Diego, who is also pretty confidently in that second place position. However, St. Mary's in lane three is going to make a little push here. They are starting to sit up and get those blades in a little bit quicker, a little bit snappier because Seattle University is hot on their heels in that fourth place position. So nobody sits easy until we are across the line here. Really beautiful rowing here by UC San Diego, crossing the line right now in that second place position, followed by St. Mary's in lane three, and Seattle University in that fourth place position. transitioning back over to the start line here for heat one of the women's collegiate varsity eight for division two 
Division Three and club programs. So we're looking at a really good cross-section here of all of those programs. And I'll give you the lane assignments. In lane one, Cal Poly Humboldt. Lane two, UC Santa Barbara. Lane three, Arizona State. Lane four, University of Puget Sound. And lane five, UC Davis. So we're looking at a good cross-section here. Humboldt as your Division II uh, program. Santa Barbara, Arizona State, and Davis as your club programs, and then University of Puget Sound, Division Three. So we'll see a really nice cross-section of speed um, and a lot of these programs. This is probably the only regatta where they will face off against each other, perhaps having raced uh, at San Diego previously, the San Diego Crew Classic previously. But other than that, the Weira Championship is really unique in the sense that we see a lot of cross-division racing and a really good opportunity to test speed before that championship season at the end of May. And all crews off the line with a clean start. We do have your leader coming out of lane one. This is Humboldt. Humboldt looking at a six seat lead over Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara looking at a challenge from the outside lane, UC Davis. So those are your top three crews, Humboldt, Santa Barbara, and then Davis. Just behind Davis by about a length, it's going to be Arizona State. Arizona State, the only rowing program in Arizona. So great to see them out here. They are a perpetual competitor at Weira um, in on both the men's and the women's side, uh, doing a great job here. Currently occupying that fourth place position and leading University of Puget Sound by about two seats. But back to the leader, it is Humboldt looking at a bow to stern advantage over UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara, one of the strongest club programs in the United States. They generally will garner many medals at the ACRA championships, the uh, American uh, club championships that this year will be contested in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. So UC Santa Barbara looking good here. Lots of patience, a lot of length coming out of that gaucho boat as they look for a little bit of open water over Davis. And there they have it. They have pulled clean of Davis, but Davis occupying that third place position, looking for a spot in the grand final. UC Davis, also a club program, generally run a student body in terms of the oversight of the training, the coaching, and the schedule. So UC, Santa, UC Davis looking good here out of lane five, holding on to the third base position. State just transitioning into that Cal Poly program. That's a new designation for the university. They have a couple of national championships under their belt. Right now, they are ranked second in the nation, just over the University of Central Oklahoma, who We'll see up next in the next heat. But right now, they're just walking away with this lead. They have about a half a length of water over UC Santa Barbara. It will be their bow first across the line with 1,000 meters to go. Lots of patience. Again, you know, this is just a heat. They need to just punch their ticket to the grand finals, and they're doing that job here. Santa Barbara behind them. They've also got open water on either side of their boat. UC Davis in third, Coxon looking across, hoping to pull clear of Arizona State and University of Puget Sound. Arizona State in fourth, Puget Sound in fifth, but really tight racing here between Arizona and Puget Sound. Turn it over to Whitney, about 750 meters to go. And that was a pretty exciting first half there. It looks like we established our leader, as you heard from Adrian Humboldt, just looking really nice. Again, that lane one spot, lucky lane one, holding their own here. Humboldt, again, like Adrian said, just really, really beautiful rowing. They do have some championships under their belt there. And as soon as I get back to the picture here, ah, there we go. Look at that in the sun here. Looks like we have lane two, Santa Barbara, just a deck behind them, so really holding on to Humboldt. They're not going to let them off that easily, but still going to try to squeeze into that grand final spot there for the top three. Again, UC Davis here on the outside, keeping an eye, I'm sure, on Humboldt all the way across the field, though. But UC Davis 
tends to have a very, very strong program too. Up in the port of Sacramento, not far from here is where they train. And on the men's and women's side, really have a phenomenal club program going on up there. And in between here, Arizona State and Puget Sound really fighting for that fourth place spot right now. Arizona looks like they may be squeezing out Puget Sound just by a few seats here. So again, Arizona, as Adrian mentioned, the only program in Arizona rowing out of Tempe Town Lake. Nice big body of water there right outside Phoenix. But it looks like our leader here, Humboldt, just really walking away with it, long, strong, kind of bringing in, bringing in that first place finish here. Uh, right alongside the shore here, it looks like now we can start to see them. So keep an eye on lane one, right along the shore here. That is Humboldt again, followed by Santa Barbara. And we'll see is if UC Davis starts to make a push on the outside. Humboldt should keep an eye on UC Davis out there in that far lane because we're starting to hit the red buoys. And you can see Davis is really going to start to make a push on that outside and try to push away from Arizona and Puget Sound. Humboldt coming in very, very confidently looking over and they don't see anybody next to them. So they're really going to make a push holding on to that first place spot, see if they can get a nice lane in that grand final. Just squeezing out Santa Barbara in that second place spot with about a half a boat open water. And Arizona really making a push against Davis here. Even look at this, Arizona squeezing in, taking the rate up a little bit, giving Davis a run for their money for that third place spot. But we'll see if they have enough water here. It's looking like UC Davis is gonna take that third place spot. Arizona in fourth and not far behind here, still connected Puget Sound rounding out the field. And that was race number five.
right? And we have a start here for the Women's Collegiate Varsity 8 for Division 2, 3, and club programs. We've got six boats on the course here in Lane 1, University of Central Oklahoma. Lane 2, Seattle Pacific. Lane 3, UC Irvine. Lane 4, Lewis and Clark. Lane 5, Pacific Lutheran. And Lane 6, Pacific University. Top three boats advance to the grand finals. So we're looking for some speed from our top ranked crew out of Division Two, University of Central Oklahoma. They are in lane one for a reason, but just next to them, their foe in Division Two, Seattle Pacific. These two are gonna go at it from the very start. Again, you know, these are our top two boats coming out of this heat right now, but they are sure to try and set, uh, make a statement really in this heat to see if we can, you know, kind of like test the waters for that grand final. Because we're looking at times, we're also looking at placement in lanes. That's really important um, in terms of a competitive, there's not necessarily a competitive advantage in the lanes, but there is that mental kind of push to get ranked and seated in the top lane, that lane one. So right now, University of Central Oklahoma and Seattle Pacific very tight with each other, but Seattle Pacific is gonna hold the edge over the Broncos of Central Oklahoma by about two seats. Behind them, it will be UC Irvine in that third spot. They're looking at about a two seat advantage over Lewis and Clark. So top four boats there. They've broken free with a bit of open water over the remaining field. In fifth place, it will be the Lutes from Pacific Lutheran University. And then just behind them, Pacific University out of Forest Grove, Oregon. Pacific University with probably the newest program in Division Three uh, for women's rowing. So doing a nice job here. They just recently raced at the Northwest Conference Championships coming in fourth. And of note as well, Lewis and Clark, also a Division Three program, they just garnered their first conference championship last week. First conference championship ever for the women's program and actually the first conference championships for the university since 2016. So just remarkable season here for Lewis and Clark, doing a nice job and really trying to gain some ground on UC Irvine, UC Irvine to make sure that they can get into that grand final. So we'll keep an eye on them. But again, top two boats, again, with a bit of open water, they're pushing each other so hard that they've now broken free of the rest of the field, Oklahoma, and Seattle Pacific side by side. Too close to call for me right here for my advantage on the water, but as they approach 1,000 meters gone, we're looking at maybe a jump here by, UC, by uh, Central Oklahoma to lock themselves into that top spot. But it's gonna be a battle all the way down the race course between the Falcons and the Broncos. Again, these are division two foes. So this is, this is a lot on the line here in these heats and at the Weira Championships in terms of ranking. Seattle Pacific doing a great job here, matching speed, literally almost stroke, stroke blades in the water as they progress past the thousand meter line. We're gonna keep an eye on this race, Whitney. This is gonna be a good one. In third, it continues to be UC Irvine. They've pulled away a little bit farther from Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark continuing in fourth. And then behind them, Pacific Lutheran. And then finally, Pacific University. Now, Adrian, you are absolutely right about lanes one and two. Look at this race here. I mean, we are almost bow ball to bow ball with University of Central Oklahoma and Seattle Pacific. I mean, almost stroke for stroke, bow ball to bow ball. These coxswains keep looking at each other eye, eye to eye. And boy, is this going to be exciting as we come into the last 500. Because it's really going to be a battle of wills here, even though we are just pushing for that, that first place spot to squeeze into that grand final. And it's looking like Central Oklahoma has a few feet of bow deck over lane two, Seattle Pacific, but we're never going to write them off until we get to the last stroke here because it is just going back and forth. As we come across that last 500 meter mark here, it's looking like Central Oklahoma, again, still just feet ahead of Seattle Pacific. This is going to be a race to the end, and it looks like two boat lengths back. 
We have UC Irvine still connected by Lewis and Clark here. That is lanes three and four. So those middle lanes sort of battling it out again for that third place spot. I'm going to give the advantage here, of course, to UC Irvine, who is about bow to stern with Lewis and Clark. Coming up to the last 250 here, we don't want to lose sight of Central Oklahoma and Seattle Pacific. Central Oklahoma still in the lead here by a few seats now. They are really just starting to push away from Seattle. Maybe have just had enough of them on their heels, but Seattle Pacific is definitely not going to make it easy for them. So keep an eye on the shore here. Last 250. It's a toss up here for that third place spot, possibly UCI. But Oklahoma here coming in all the way from Oklahoma to really, really throw down on the course here. And what a finish there from Oklahoma and Seattle Pacific. Great race, ladies. UCI here in that third place position, it's looking like, and still connected is Lewis and Clark in lane four. Just barely squeezed out of that third place spot there. And in lane five here within the last 10 strokes, Pacific Lutheran, followed by Pacific University Forest Grove in the outside lane six to round out race six of the morning here. That is the women's division two. And there we have it. Really great racing by all crews there. That'll be an exciting final.
right, we are underway in heat two of, excuse me, this is heat one of the women's collegiate 2v8 division one and open programs. In lane one, University of San Diego. Lane two, Sacramento State. Lane three, UC San Diego. Lane four, University of Portland. Lane five, St. Mary's College. And lane six, Seattle University. So as we had said previously, these races are seated and generally your fastest crew comes out of lane one. And again, this is very early on in the race, this first 500, you know, who has that best race, who has the most aggression and excitement coming off of the line. And right now our top three crews are gonna come out of lanes one, two, and three, but not necessarily in that order. Your leader right now out of the gate is UC San Diego. UC San Diego sitting in that top spot, three seats over Sacramento State. Sac State in second, sitting four seats over the tr over uh, the Toreros of University of San Diego. All bows now past 500 meters in. In fourth, we're gonna move over to lane four, that's Portland. The pilots from the University of Portland still in contact with those top three boats, so we'll keep an eye on them. And then just behind Portland, it will be Seattle University the Red Hawks sitting about four seats over St. Mary's. St. Mary's rowing on the Briones Reservoir in Moraga, same body of water that Mills College, formerly Mills College, and Cal Crew row on. But we're still looking at the Tritons of UC San Diego holding on to that top spot, but watching it shrink a little bit as Sac State and University of San Diego push each other, there's still a lot of contact here. And again, just in this first 750 meters, we'll see a lot of change on the water as boats make different moves, as the coxswains work off of each other. From my vantage point of the launch, it's uh, really a place of honor where I can hear the coxswains, I can hear the excitement coming out of those boats. And you can see those little micro movements that the team is making. But UC San Diego, they are holding tight to this top spot here. Still three seats over Sac State. Sac State now just two seats over San Diego, uh, over University of San Diego in lane one. Now they've broken free, these top three boats, broken three free with open water. Portland now behind, uh, in still in that fourth place position, but now behind by about a seat and a half of open water. And then with open water behind them, it will continue to be Seattle University in fifth, followed by St. So these crews, top three boats to move on to the grand final. This is the second City 8. Their bows coming across 1,000 meters to go. This is going to be a great race all the way to the line as we see how these race plans work out. San University of San Diego still holding tight to that top spot. Sacramento State in second, but with the Toreros of University of San Diego on the hunt. Whitney, we'll turn it over to you. Well, Adrian, I don't think you could have gotten us started any better than that. I mean, look at this race between lanes one, two, and three. We are just at a at a beautiful, a beautiful position here to see these boats just neck and neck, bow ball to bow ball. And it is really difficult to lead a race from start to finish. And here we see UC San Diego has actually done that. But Again, we still have a lot of the race to go, so we'll see because we have Sac State and San Diego absolutely bow ball to bow ball, just maybe two or three seats down. At most, it's going back and forth even as we speak, really giving UC San Diego a run for their money. And right now, I would really keep an eye on University of San Diego in lane one. It looks like they are making the strongest push against UC San Diego. Love to see a little San Diego rivalry going on there in lanes one and three. Sac State squished in the middle of the two of them, though, and not letting them off easy because they are still going to make a push here as we start to come towards the last 500 here. And it looks like lane one, University of San Diego, maybe inching up on bow ball to bow ball here with UC San Diego. So we'll see if these Tritons can hold them off through the last 500. And we should be able to see them if you're on the beach now. Take a look and watch lane one here. University of San Diego starting to edge out UC San Diego in lane three. Still being challenged by Sac State right in the middle of them. It's looking like University of San Diego 
keeping their composure here, staying long and strong. They know they really have to throw down here in the last little bit of the race here. See if they can hold off University of San Diego in that last little bit. It looks like they have a three-seat advantage, but still walking from my position here. So keep an eye on them on the beach. And we have Sac State starting to make a little push on UC San Diego in lane two here. They are not letting go of UC San Diego. They are holding on to them for dear life and really starting to challenge here. Again, still connected to lane one, University of San Diego as well. But San Diego in lane one has that lead at this point. And it will be top three to the final, so we want to keep an eye on those top three spots. And right now, that is lane one, University of San Diego. Lane three, UC San Diego, the Tritons there. Lane two, Sac State, really making a push on University of San Diego. But as of now, these three are our top three leaders here, followed by, it's looking like, University of Portland who is still not far behind. Less than a boat behind them, University of uh, Portland, St. Mary's, and Seattle. Look at this. Now, that was very difficult to call University of San Diego. UC San Diego, Sac State, followed by Lane 4, University of Portland followed by St. Mary's and Seattle University. That is going to be an exciting final, one that I will definitely be interested to see. Really well done. Those were the second varsity eights, and we have another heat. We'll see who goes up against our top three. This is a race for lanes here. We've just got one heat of this women's collegiate 2v8 for division two, three, and club programs. We've got five boats on the course. Cal Poly Humboldt, lane one, 
Seattle Pacific University in lane two, Lewis and Clark lane three, UC Santa Barbara in lane four, and Pacific Lutheran University in lane five. Humboldt State really hot out of the gates. They had a very aggressive start, a high stroke rating. For those of you who are new to the sport of rowing, maybe watching online to the live stream brought to you by the Rowing Channel for this great coverage with drones and cameras. A start means, you know, these boats are, are very heavy, they're, they're long, and they have to start from a dead stop. So the way that they do that is that they start with a progression of very high strokes to get the boat speed up and running and then they slowly transition to a more sustainable stroke rate for the body of the piece. So watching that transition, we saw Humboldt jump out of the gates with a very quick start, and then that transition down to their base rate, but they've kept it pretty aggressive. So lane one, Humboldt State, currently holding on to that top spot, sit, sitting six seats over Seattle Pacific. Seattle Pacific also holding tight to that second place position with seven seats over UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara looking at a challenge from the lane right next to them off of their port side, that's Lewis and Clark. And again, we had spoken earlier about the fact that Lewis and Clark had won their conference championships last weekend. So they're coming into this We Are a Championship with a lot of confidence, a lot of speed and power for that program. And looking at holding tight here to UC Santa Barbara and then these other Division II programs ahead of them. Just a little bit off the back, it's going to be Pacific Lutheran. The Lutes, they're back by a little bit of open water, rowing out of lane five. Again, rowing cleanly. Uh, it's not quite able to match the speed, and they've lost contact with the top four boats. But as we come up to the halfway point, the Lumberjacks out of lane one, continuing to just inch themselves a little bit farther away from Seattle Pacific. Seattle Pacific now broken free with a bit of open water over the Gauchos of Santa Barbara. And Santa Barbara looking at not having moved any further away from Lewis and Clark. Pioneers doing a nice job, really battling back and forth as coxswains looking across at each other. And, you know, a lot of people think for rowing that it's, it's just so calm, it looks so easy. But the amount of intensity and aggression that's on the water, there are little battles going on out there. And that's looking at between that Santa Barbara boat and the Lewis boat. So we'll keep an eye on them as we come further down the course. But back to the leaders at 1,000 th meters, it will be Humboldt. Now with a full boat length over Seattle Pacific, Seattle Pacific clear of UC Santa Barbara in third. But again, this is a race for lanes. So depending on their positioning at the finish line, we'll see them placed in lanes one, two, three, four, five, six for that grand final. We'll turn it over to Whitney. Uh, for this 2v8 for Division 2, 3, and club programs.
start here for the first men's race. Sorry, this will be the, <laughs> the third men's race of the morning. I forgot about the varsity eights earlier this morning. This is the novice eights. So these are the men's collegiate novice eights. We've got two heats that will be contested this morning with the top three crews moving to the grounds. In lane one, Orange Coast College. Lane two, UC Davis. Lane three, UCLA. Lane four, Santa Barbara. And lane five, Arizona State. So all crews still very early on. They're still in those high strokes, uh, as we spoke about earlier, the start sequence. Got to get that boat speed up and running with a series of very short, sharp strokes. And you know, seeing how they do in that first 250 meters doesn't necessarily play out for the whole rest of the, the race. So we keep an eye on the progression as they go down the race course. But coming out with a good start and leading from the very start really adds to the confidence for these crews. And right now, the two crews with the best starts are gonna come out of lane one and lane three, UCLA and Orange Coast College. So right now, the leader is gonna come out of lane three, that's UCLA. They've had just a tremendous season in the varsity programs, also quite a good season with the novices. And a lot of these athletes um, across the board here with all of these crews, with zero rowing experience in high school. We're sure to see some that have uh, that have rowed in high school, but the majority of these athletes walk-ons. So we're seeing some very good athletic prowess coming out of that UCLA boat, rowing very cleanly, definitely quite mature here, rowing down the center of the course with Orange Coast College rowing out of lane one, their closest competitor, but UCLA right now looking at a lead of about four seats over the Pirates of Orange Coast. Of note with Orange Coast, they are the only junior college in the United States that hosts a rowing program, and they are generally a feeder program to Division I schools. A lot of their athletes moving on to those big Division I programs, and the novice teams always doing quite well, um, had really great performances earlier in the season at San Diego, and then on their home course uh, with the Newport Regatta and the Bird Cup. But UCLA makes and looking across at the OCC boat, She's asking for a little bit more, and UCLA indeed has moved up just by a couple of more seats. They're looking to have a full boat length advantage right now over Orange Coast College. Orange Coast looking at one full boat length over UC Davis. So those are your top three boats. Davis, in the third place spot, has about a length of open water over UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara looking at about a third advantage over Arizona State. And again, Arizona State with an eight here, both for the men and for the women. They've got a really great club program and the only rowing program for colleges in Arizona. So rowing on Tempe Town Lake, doing a nice job still in contact to UC Santa Barbara. Boats now coming across the halfway point. UCLA, the Bruins still holding on to that top spot. But now here is OCC, Orange Coast College, making a jump here and taking a power 10 to see if they can inch a little bit closer to UCLA's lead. And also Davis still in contact. So hot racing here out of these top three boats. Santa Barbara back by a bit of open water, now breaking free of Arizona State. So you see Santa Barbara in fourth, Arizona in fifth.
that And Orange Coast College take a look at this. And they are just barely going to run out of water. So that will be UCLA followed very closely by Orange Coast College. And followed very closely again by UC Davis. And that will be a race for lanes. Again, here we have Santa Barbara. In that fourth place position, followed by Arizona State. And that will be our Heat One of the men's Novice Eight. Right, heat two of the men's collegiate novice eight. These are the building blocks of their varsity program, and we're seeing some great rowing, a lot of maturity and composure here out of these novice boats. In lane one, Santa Clara. Lane two, Southern California. Lane three, UC Irvine. Lane four, Washington State. And lane five, Western Washington University. And right now, just at 500 meters down, we're looking at some really tight racing here between lanes one, two, and three, with your early leader coming out of lane three, UC Irvine. So again, very early on in the race, UC Irvine and Santa Clara even. They have about a four seat lead or, over USC, and USC looking at about a stern advantage over Washington State. Washington State has broken free, a little bit of open water for them over Western Washington. So we're seeing a good cross section of regions here, Southern California, Northern California, and then Washington with all of these crews. But right now, looking at a nice job of patience here with Santa Clara, they have seen a lot of racing action this year. They've traveled quite a distance to 
test their metal against some of the best crews in California and throughout uh, their division. And it's showing here as these novices are really doing a nice job being very patient and again, staying with their own boat as they progress down the race course. So the Broncos of Santa Clara now pulling themselves into the lead. You see Irvine behind them, the Ant Eaters, staying also composed. They need to just be in that top three spot to get into the grand final. So again, one of the things that we see in these heats is just, it's all about execution. So they just need to be able to, pro to progress to the next level. And right now we're looking at Santa Clara, Irvine, and USC holding on to those top three spots, maybe not putting all of their cards on the table, but again, it's just about execution. It's about confidence. It's about how do we come down with the race plan that's gonna be the most effective for us in the grand final because every time you race, it gets that much harder. It gets that much faster. So all of these novice crews doing a nice job. Washington State, they are again, they are a club program with a lot of history and a lot of championship medals uh, to their journey. And they're doing a nice job here as they hold on to that fourth place position, looking at about a half a boat length of open water over the Vikings of Western Washington. All boats approaching 750 meters to go. Santa Clara now pulling away from Irvine with open water to hold on to that top spot. And it's looking like that now for us here with the drone, this beautiful drone shot here. We can see Santa Clara in that lane one position, just absolutely confidently rowing down the course here. And Santa Clara really has a deep program. They've really done a great job building their program over the last decade or so and come out with some very, very strong performances across the club and have done a phenomenal job just building up that program. It is looking like... They are followed by lane three, UC Irvine, which also has a very, very deep history. A lot of legends have come from that program. Practicing out there in Newport Beach, same water as Orange Coast College as we come across that 500 meter mark. And in that third place position here, we have University of Southern California. And a little bit of open water separating all three of these. So we have Santa Clara, pretty confidently out in front, boat and a half length open water or so, and we should start to see them now along the shore. So if you are on the beach, take a look at lane one and watch this Santa Clara novice eight. I mean, they are, they are phenomenal here. Blades in, confident rowing, followed by UCI here. And again, University of Southern California. And I just love watching these novice eights row because sometimes these athletes have experience coming in and sometimes they're walk-ons. So it's really a toss up with the experience of these novice eights. You know, you could have athletes in here that have rowed for four years in high school and you could have some that are absolute walk-ons. So it's really exciting to see what comes together for these novice eights. And it's looking like Santa Clara here is pretty confident in this first place position and we'll see how much they even bring it up for a sprint as this is just a race for lanes. And we have UCI still holding off University of Southern California. Washington State in fourth in that fourth place position. And maybe two boat lengths back, it's looking like from my angle, we have Western Washington in lane five. UCI finishing here in that third place position. Followed by USC in that black shell. And that will be Washington State and Western Washington rounding out our heat two of the men's novice eight.
first of two heats for the women's collegiate novice eight. In this race, we have five boats on the course. In lane one, UC San Diego. Lane two, Sac State. Lane three, UC Santa Barbara. Lane four, UC Irvine. And lane five, Cal Lightweights. Now, for a lot of these crews in their novice year, many of them may not have actually started a race with a starting platform. So sometimes you do some, a floating start where, where you'll have someone on the shoreline aligning the boats, trying to get the boats perfectly aligned before a start. Well, here at Lake Natoma, we've got a starting platform and you have someone holding on to the stern deck of the boat and then someone on shore aligning so that you have really perfect alignment. It's one of the beauties of Lake Natoma. And again, as we see, as we had seen earlier, that starting sequence, super important to the confidence, just setting a tone for the rest of the race. And right now we're looking at the best start coming out of your hometown crew, Sacramento State. They really jumped out of the gates. That was a great start here by these ladies. Taking a lot of high strokes very cleanly, which is also really important. You want the coxswain to not have to steer at all. So if the rowers are doing a good job with their blade placement, with their timing, that boat's gonna go just dead straight down the course and the coxswain has to do little work with the steering, which actually every time she turns the rudder can slow down the boat just a little bit. So we look at the course as something that really makes a difference in terms of the progression of the boat down the race course and at 500 meters gone, it is Sacramento State, the Hornets with that top spot. They are sitting with about a stern advantage over UC San Diego. UC San Diego with a bit of open water over, uh, that would be UC Irvine. So Irvine in the top three. UC Irvine sitting with three seats for Santa Barbara and Santa Barbara two seats over Cal Light. So those uh, bottom three crews, still a lot of overlap but now Sacramento State breaking free with open water to move a little bit farther away from the Tritons of UC San Diego. Again, we call the novices the building blocks of the varsity program. These are the ladies that are going to move up and you know garner a lot of experience here at the Weira Championships throughout their spring. There's a lot of walk-ons, uh, meaning athletes that have had no prior rowing experience, but just generally fitting the bill for what the optimal rower is. They've got the size, they've got the athleticism, and jumping into a collegiate program, uh, being able to be taught within that first year of rowing to perform at a high level, that's exactly what we're seeing here with these novice crews. So Sac State doing a nice job as they continue to inch away from UC San Diego. It's 750 meters gone for them, rowing very cleanly and relaxed. Let's get a stroke rate on Sac State and UC San Diego. got Sac State clocked at 36 and a half strokes a minute as they come across 1,000 meters to go. UC San Diego behind them at 35 and a half strokes a minute. So not too much of a difference in terms of when the blades are striking the water, but sometimes that does have a little bit of a different effect on the cruise. So if you really put it all out of the line in that first thousand meters, you might have to pay for it in the last half of the race. So we'll see how that, how that works here for both Sac State and UC San Diego. They are very fit, they are very strong. I can see the size in both of these boats. And so a powerful crew from both Sac State and UC San Diego. Irvine doing also a really nice job here, uh, rowing out of lane four. They now have broken free and are looking at about a length of open water over UC Santa Barbara. And then just behind them, Cal Light. So we'll turn it over to Whitney for the last 750 meters of this Women's Collegiate Novice Eight, Heat One. Uh, Adrian again brings up a really good point about stroke rates and trying to kind of maintain that boat speed from start to finish and that's really difficult to do that really takes a lot of maturity in a crew and if we look at that Sac State crew in the lead here in lane two look at the second half of their strokes this is a novice crew and they are really getting a lot of send here in the second half of that stroke and really maintaining their lead almost because of that very consistent getting blades in and a lot of push through that second half 
really making it look easy, which is phenomenal, again, for a novice crew. So some of these women may have experience and some may be walk-ons. And here in lane one, we have UC San Diego, which is a boat, boat and a half length behind. It's looking like as they are kind of starting to move up a little bit. So I don't want to write them off, that's for sure. But we really have some nice rowing here, again, from these novice crews. It's so cool to see this. Because again, the experience levels can be so different and as we come into that 500 meter mark to go. Um, Sac State running through a few geese there. That can always be a little startling for some of those rowers as they start to flap off the water. But Sac State is completely unshaken by this. And we should be able to see them now along the shore. So keep an eye out. Lane two, Sac State, that is our leader. Followed by UC San Diego right along the shore. And just a little bit off of our screen here, a few boat lengths behind UC San Diego. It's looking like it's going to be lane three, Santa Barbara. Excuse me, that might be UCI here. As we pull out just a little bit, I'm getting a better view of the course here. That may be UCI actually in lane four, followed by Santa Barbara. But Sac State here on their home water, coming up to the last 250. Couldn't ask for better water here and a really nice performance from Sac State. Good. We'll see if they even start to bring it up in this second half here. You see San Diego along the shore going to make a little bit of a push, but again, this is just a race for lanes. So as Adrian said, they will probably not show all of their cards at this point. But it looks like we have UCI and Santa Barbara followed by Cal Lights. But in the lead, it is going to be our home team of Sac State in lane two, followed by that little shark fin bow number one, UC San Diego. In that USP, that Hudson, black shell, beautiful, followed by UC Irvine. And lane three, Santa Barbara, followed by Cal Lights in lane five. And that is our first heat of the women's novice eight. Right, we're already underway in heat two of the women's collegiate novice eight. Top three boats move on to the grand finals and in lane one, we have University of San Diego. Lane two, Orange Coast College. Lane three, UC Davis. And lane four, Arizona State. Your top boat in these early strokes will be coming out of lane two. That's Orange Coast College. They're in that beautiful orange boat, bright orange unisuits, the white blades with the orange flash at the end. 
really making a statement here in this first 500 meters to move away from University of San Diego already with a bit of open water. So great showing here in the first strokes of this women's novice eight. Behind them, the Toreros out of lane one. They are rowing maybe with a little bit more composure, I would say, or you know, just a little bit lower stroke rate, looking very patient. So again, we'll keep an eye on them as they progress down the race course. First 500 meters is just the first 500. Really what matters is what happens at the finish line. And as you've noticed all morning, there is a lot that can change. At that third 500, that is where the fitness comes in. That is where the technique comes in because anyone can do anything for that first 500. And here we go with their bow first across the line, Orange Coast College holding on to that top spot. University of San Diego just behind them. Bit of open water though between themselves and the Pirates. The Torero Coxon looking across her starboard side because she is looking at a challenge from Santa Barbara but they seem to be holding them off. Excuse me, that would be UC Davis. Uh, they seem to be holding them off and she is urging her crew on to see if they can take just a little bit more water away from the Aggies of UC Davis. Davis doing a nice job pushing themselves a little bit farther away from Arizona State. So again, these novice programs, a lot of walk-on athletes, very little experience coming into the program, but there are certain to be some athletes that maybe uh, rode in high school. And so some good uh, knowledge as they come into this racing season. You really can't beat the conditions that we have here at Lake Natoma. This is absolute glass water, really very little wind uh, to deal with, nice flow on the water, and you know just optimal positions for fast, or optimal conditions for fast time. So we'll keep an eye on uh, the official race results because they're sure to compare times from heat to heat. That is something that coaches will do. They'll take a, a look at the earlier heat to figure out, you know, how fast are we? What's the difference between these two heats? What do we need to do to make sure that we're on par with the winners of the heats before? But right now, the Pirates just walking away with this win. This is probably the biggest margin between crews that I've seen all morning. So Orange Coast College coming across 1,000 meters to go already with just about two to two and a half lengths of open water between themselves and the University of San Diego. The Aggies though doing a nice job, really tenacious here as they continue to try and maintain contact with the University of San Diego. The Aggies have moved themselves just a little bit farther away from Arizona. Looks like the Arizona State Coxon though has perhaps lost her speaker system. She is uh, definitely using her lungs and the power of her voice to get to her crew. That is a little bit of a hardship and Whitney can speak to that as a former Coxon, what it's like to lose your speaker system in the middle of the race. Um, but these, these teams are very, very hardy. They're sure to deal with a lot of um, adversity throughout the racing season. So if you have a good crew, they're prepared for anything to happen on the water. And Arizona State doing a nice job, uh, not quite able to match the speed of the other crews, but again, doing a very rowing very cleanly and uh, have a good showing here as they come through the third 500. Whitney, we'll turn it over to you.
a challenge out here on the race course. With the men's collegiate varsity eight, we've got eight boats on the course. That's not something that you usually see uh, during the spring racing season. Generally, it taps out at about seven boats, but we've got so many entries in this category that we've pushed it out to eight lanes. So for the aligner, it definitely can be a little bit of a challenge, making sure that all of these boats are in the proper position. Um, so from my angle, one of the things that I'm looking at is the coxswains making slight adjustments um, pointing their boats down the course. Again, there's no wind or anything out here, so really no elements to deal with. Um, but we do want to make sure that everything is fair, that everyone is in a good position for the best possible start. So let me give you the lane assignments. In lane one, Cal Poly Humboldt. Lane two, Seattle University. Lane three, UCLA. Lane four, UC Santa Barbara. Lane five, UC San Diego B. Lane six, UCLA, lane seven, Sonoma State, and lane eight, Santa Clara. And we've got a start. All right, we've got eight boats on the course, so there is a lot of action happening, but it does look like our leader is going to be Santa Barbara coming down the center of the race course. Again, this is the men's varsity eight, and so, or excuse me, varsity four. So we've got a lot of good athleticism out here, a lot of great rowing. This is gonna be a really exciting race because we've got so much action going on, but taking advantage of these conditions, it is UC Santa Barbara with the lead. Right next to them, it will be UCLA holding on to that second place uh, position and UC San Diego B also in that mix. So those are your top three crews. We're looking also at a really great start here by Santa Clara. So as these boats crum come across 500, it's sure to shake out a little bit as we progress down the race course. So we've got, just to be clear, two UCLA boats, UCLA A in lane six, and then it looks like perhaps UCLA B in lane three. So we'll try to keep it clear here. But moving back over to the leaders, really tight racing here going on between Santa Barbara and UC San Diego with Santa Clara on that far outside lane eight. It is difficult to be so far apart from your closest competitor. And the coxswain is in the bow of the boat, which is unusual um, for those of you that might be a little bit new to rowing. The coxswain is looking straight down the race course, but has to be very savvy in making sure that they can see what the other crews are doing. And right now, Santa Clara, Santa Barbara, and UC San Diego, really, really tight racing between those top three crews. Now behind them, it's going to be UCLA A in the fourth place position, followed by UCLA B, and then Seattle University, finally Sonoma State, and then in the eighth place position, Cal Poly Humble. But back to the leaders, again, almost a dead heat here between UC San Diego and Santa Clara with Santa Barbara A right there behind them. We're gonna give it a little bit of time as we approach 1,000 meters to see if we can get a little bit better separation between crews. All boats now approaching the halfway point. And as we come across 1,000 meters to, grow, to go, UC San Diego B pushing themselves into the lead spot. So they took a little bit of a jump there at the halfway point wanting to make sure that they execute their race plan, make a statement here, stay composed and solid for the first half of the race, and then try and just walk away as they come into this third 500. So UC San Diego B with the lead, Santa Barbara A in the second place position, and Santa Clara chasing. Those are your top three crews. UCLA in fourth, followed by UCLA B, and then finally Seattle University, now Humboldt in seventh, and then Sonoma State in eighth.
check, check. And our apologies for losing a little bit of sound and visuals here for a moment, but we are jumping into a pretty exciting race here. Lane one, Puget Sound, and you should be able to see them now coming into about this, the last 250. If you are on the beach there, we have three boats across. It's looking like Puget Sound in first. And then maybe a race here between Orange Coast College and UC Irvine.
Again, an eight-lane race. So the lanes will matter. These teams will be fighting for those lane spots, and that will be lane one, Puget Sound, with quite a finish. Orange Coast College maybe squeezing into that second place position. That coxswain looking over just to make sure. Looks like UC Davis on the outside. And Santa Barbara. And here we have Arizona State. And in lane two, Chico State. And it looks like within their last 10 strokes here, that will be Sac State in lane four. Finishing up our heat two of the men's varsity four. And we have an announcement and a request from the Sac State staff here at the venue. Due to an illness, if there are any additional volunteers that would be willing to help with steak boats for the afternoon, we would love to talk to you. If you would please come to the finish line tent, the Sac State Aquatic Center would be very grateful if you would like to actually get out in the middle of the action and volunteer for a steak boat position for the afternoon. That would be greatly appreciated and you will have a front row seat to all the action. So come see us at the finish line.
All right, and I hope that we are back online with some good audio to tell you what's going on in this set, uh, third heat of the men's collegiate varsity four. Top two boats right now are gonna come out of lanes one and two, that's UC San Diego and USC. These two boats pushing each other so hard that they have left everyone else in their wake. So we'll try to shake it out for placements of three through eight. In the third place spot, it's going to be Santa Clara. Santa Clara sitting with about a two seat advantage over Humble, excuse me, over uh, Western Washington and then also Loyola Marymount. So third place is going to go to Santa Clara, followed by Loyola Marymount in fourth, or uh, Western Washington, and then Loyola Marymount. In six, it's going to be the crew from UC Davis sitting just a couple of seats over Cal Lightweights. And then in the final position, it will be Humboldt B rowing out of lane four. So a lot of action out here, but what is certain is that your top two boats are coming out of lanes one and two. That's UC San Diego now leading USC by a boat length. All boats now approaching 1,000 meters gone. Getting a little bit of steering uh, corrections coming from the referees. Again, this course is fairly well buoyed, but with eight boats across, there is a lot to keep track of. The coxswains, again, have to be very savvy about where they are on the race course because they're paying attention to not only race strategy, but what's happening with the other crews. And with a lot of the action out here, it's a tough job for these coxswains, but all doing a pretty good job and coming back into a good course and alignment. Uh, as we head down to the third 500. But top crew, again, UC San Diego A, now pulling open with a little bit of open water over USC. And as we are past that 1,000 meter mark now, it's looking like things haven't changed too, too much. We are still looking at lane one, UC San Diego in that lead. Maybe with a couple seats open water on lane two, USC. Followed by lane three, Santa Clara. Looks like fourth is Western Washington. Followed by Loyola Marymount. And a lot of times, too, you do see little clumps of races start to form when you have eight lanes across like this because the coxswains can really see each other and race each other a little bit better when they're closer together. So as a coxswain, when you're buried in the bow of that boat, it is a little bit hard to see eight lanes across for who your competitors are. So you really have to keep an eye on who is sneaking up on those outside lanes. There's really a lot to look at here in addition to focusing on the steering and executing your race with your own crew. So really, really savvy coxswains here in this eight-lane race. It's very exciting. But we are still looking at lane one, UC San Diego, walking away with it a little bit here. And you can see them from the beach now. A lot of boats across. This is a pretty exciting race, even though it is for lanes. This is the heat three of the men's varsity four. Three boats will move on to that grand final. Excuse me, two boats will move on to that grand final. And right now it is looking like still UC San Diego here right along the shore. I'm sure feeling confident that Coxon just keeping her crew in the race at this point. But she's still going to have to keep an eye on that USC crew who is in lane two in that second place position, followed by Santa Clara, who is still connected bow to stern to USC in lane two. So we have that three boat race and two will move on. And again, that shark fin bow number here coming in number one along the shore here. That is UC San Diego in a pretty comfortable first, followed by lane two, USC. Still being challenged a little bit by lane three, Santa Clara. And in fifth here, that will be Western Washington.
and it looks like Cal Lights and UC Davis. And it looks like we still have our lane four that is Humboldt on the course here. I'm not sure if they had a little steering correction or something happened out there, but they are going to finish here in those red buoys. They will round out our heat three of the men's varsity four, three eight lane heats. That is very, very exciting. And we will be excited to see what happens in that grand final and that petite final. They should all be very exciting races tomorrow. There we go. Let's give it up for Humboldt here, finishing up the men's varsity four, heat three. All right, we're going to calm down a little bit now with a more manageable five lanes, uh, five boats on the course. We're looking at the Women's Collegiate Varsity Four for Division One and Open programs. In lane one, University of San Diego A. Lane two, Sac State. Lane three, UC, University of San Diego B. Lane four, University of Portland, and lane five, Seattle University. So to be clear, USD, the Toreros, with two entries in this race in lane one and lane three. So we'll keep an eye on both of those boats as they progress down the race course. And indeed, USD holding on to the top two spots. So their A boat in lane one with a slight lead over the B boat in lane three. Just behind them, it will be Sacramento State in third. They are sitting bow to stern over Portland, Portland sitting three seats over Seattle University. And as crews settle down into the base rhythm, Generally, what we will see is the crews will find a pace or what we call a stroke rating that is sustainable for the body of the race. So anywhere between 250 meters gone to about the last 250, and then they'll crank it up again and go for more of a sprint. So right now, the top two boats, the University of San Diego A and B boats, both rowing at about 36 strokes a minute. So pacing each other, the coxswains looking across. And I'm wondering if this may be just a little bit of a seat race for some of these ladies out here on the course, seeing how they add up uh, next to their teammates. But both boats doing a really nice job, pushing themselves so hard that they now have about a length of open water over the rest of the field. Behind them, it will be Sac State, hoping to pull clear of Portland. Portland doing a nice job, but still within contact of Seattle University. So Seattle University in the fifth place position, their bow still on the stern deck of the pilot's boat rowing out of lane four.
at 750 meters gone. The A-boat of University of San Diego has pulled themselves into the lead position, now sitting bow to stern over the B-boat from University of San Diego. Our crew from Sac State, the Hornets, still in contact with Portland. Portland now pulled free of Seattle University. So a lot of uh, a, a lot going on out here. Some uh, different races, not a whole lot of side-by-side -side action. Which also, and Whitney can speak to this a little bit as a coxswain, in these bow-loaded fours is really quite difficult because the coxswain has to be savvy enough to be able to tell her crews exactly where they are on the race course and in relation to the other boats. So when you don't have a crew that's right next to you, it is hard to convey that information. All boats doing a nice job as they approach the halfway point. Lane one, University of San Diego in the lead, bow to stern over their teammates in lane three, University of San Diego B. Behind them by about two lengths of open water, Sac State continues in third. University of Portland in fourth, still in contact with Sac State. There's a bit of overlap there. And then behind them, Seattle University in fifth. And we are comfortably through that halfway point. And it's looking like we still have lane one, UC San Diego A, in our lead here, although they are trailed not too far by their teammates, UC, sorry, University of San Diego B, my apologies, that would be University of San Diego in lane one and University of San Diego in lane three, followed by Sac State. In lane two, and Adrian is absolutely right. With the coxswain's vision here, you give a lot of boats the side eye as you come down the course. You have to keep peeking out of the sides of your bow as you are down in the cockpit like that, steering and you know trying to maintain that course as well as keep your crews motivated while keeping an eye on some of these other crews and not letting them distract you or sneak up from behind, which is pretty easy to do when everybody else can see behind you. So sometimes you do actually rely on your crews to tell you or say something if another crew is coming up behind you. But it is looking like University of San Diego in lane one is about to come through that 500 meter mark to go. And they are still connected. It's looking like bow to stern with their teammates, University of San Diego B in lane three. Now I'm sure they get to see each other on the water pretty often, every day, hopefully. And in lane two, Sac State trailing with a few boat lengths, open water behind them. And as soon as we get University of Portland and Seattle University in our view, we will see where they are and look at this beautiful drone shot as we pull back a little bit here. It's looking like University of Portland in that fourth place position, but not by much from Sac State and then Seattle University in fifth place. So it looks like we have a few little formations of two and two and then Seattle just a little bit behind in that fifth place position. This is a two heat race, so the top three will move on. And if you look along the shore here, straight across at those bow balls, we'll see lane one, University of San Diego, followed by their teammates, University of San Diego B in lane three. And these coxswains are probably looking over at each other with a little bit of a rivalry themselves. It's fun when you're racing your own team, especially for lanes. And in that third place position, but again, not by much, we have Sac State and University of Portland. Yeah, look at these coxswains here, lanes one and three, giving each other that side eye again, but urging their crews through the finish line, last five strokes or so. And there you have it. 
Lanes one and three, University of San Diego A and University of San Diego B in the top two spots. And it's looking like Sac State in lane two will take that third spot position in the grand final. Followed by University of Portland. And Seattle on the outside. And that will be the end of our Heat 1 of the Women's Varsity 4. And the racing never stops here at Lake Natoma as we turn our attention straight back up to the start for Heat 2 of the Women's Collegiate Varsity 4 for Division 1 and Open programs. Right now, with just four boats on the course, the top three will move on to that grand final. In Lane 1, UC San Diego A. Lane 2, Stanford. Lane 3, UC San Diego B, and Lane 4, St. Mary's. Already quite a bit of separation here and just 250 meters gone, or just shy actually of 500 meters. We've got a good race developing here between the top two boats. That would be Stanford and UC San Diego A out of Lane 1. Now just behind UC San Diego A will be their teammates, just like we saw in the previous heat. We got two entries from the same school. We've got UC San Diego B in Lane 3. They are occupying the third place position, sitting bow to stern over St. Mary's. And as the crews approach the first 500 meters gone, we're looking at a bit of a change with the leader it is the lightweights from Stanford again this program separate from the open division um, at the university so operating on a little bit different race schedule also a different championship schedule this is not an NCAA sport so the weight category here with the lightweights they actually contest their national championships at the IRAs which is held for the men uh, generally on the East Coast and so it's kind of an interesting um, an, an interesting division, but as we see from Stanford, also very, very strong um, in the lightweight division, being competitive with open weights. Again, a testament to their high level of fitness. They are very, very aggressive. I'm gonna get a stroke rate on them because they definitely are holding quite a high stroke rate, which is working for them right now. Thirty-seven strokes a minute for Stanford. UC San Diego in lane one looking really composed, really a lot of flow here and connection with this crew rowing out of lane one. Nice job as the blades move into the water. I'm um, seeing a high level of technical proficiency coming out of them, doing a nice job holding on to that second place spot. Back by open water, it will be the B entry for the Tritons and then behind them, St. Mary's holding on to the fourth place position. All right, all crews approaching the halfway point. One of the things that we talk about is how do you strategize a mile and a quarter of a race? Oftentimes it's by taking little chunks. So you start out with the first 500, there's a strategy for the second 500, and then really where the true race comes out is that third 500. That is where we see the high level of fitness, where we see the technique play out, because when the body starts to get tired, you've got to have that technique in hand in order to keep the boat moving efficiently. And right now, the lights from Stanford, the Cardinal, doing a nice job with that as they continue to extend their lead and walk away from the rest of the field. Behind them, San Diego, University of California at San Diego with their A boat in the second place spot, followed by the B boat from UC San Diego, and then finally, St. Mary's College.
and as we start moving into the last 500 we can see them along the shore now and it looks like not that much has changed we still have stanford in lane two rowing at quite a high stroke rate and you can see the second half of their stroke they're really leaning on it here keeping that stroke rate high and that's the beauty of having a lighter crew is you can sometimes keep that stroke rate up pretty high and row like little hummingbirds down the course and it's sure working for them here for stanford in lane two followed by lane one uc san diego lane three uc san diego b and St. Mary's and we have a pretty decent spread here so at this point I'm not sure we'll see much place changing but we never want to write anybody off as you know anything can happen in racing and here at Lake Natoma at Wira we are always here for all the action hopefully nothing too bad but here in lane two again you are looking at your leader which is Stanford just rowing comfortably along at that stroke rate clipping along down to the last 300 meters here as we start kind of gearing up for these red buoys we'll see if they do anything for their sprint again this is a two heat race so top three will move on to that grand final Yeah, that coxswain squeezing a little bit close to that starboard side there on the buoy line for Stanford, but they are in the lead pretty comfortably. That will be followed by lane one right along the beach here, you see San Diego. And I don't want to speak too soon, but it's looking like they will be pretty comfortably in that second position bringing it up just a little bit, seeing if they can close a little bit of water on Stanford in first here. Third place will be that second UC San Diego boat. That coxswain urging her crews to finish up the last five strokes. And that will be followed by St. Mary's. And as St. Mary's crosses the line here, that will be the end of our women's varsity four, heat two. And we're back up at the start for the first heat of three for the women's collegiate varsity four. This would be for division two, division three, and club programs. So again, a very popular category here. 
for Division Two, when you progress to the national championships, the boat selection is based on the performance of your Varsity 8 and your Varsity 4. The 2v8 doesn't play into, um, into contention for that. In Division 2, it's your top two eights. So interestingly, you know, you'll see um, a lot uh, of racing in the fours between all these different types of programs, but giving the opportunity to the athletes to race at, um, in, in these different categories and see the difference between boat speed spread across the programs. So in these three heats, we're going to see a good cross section between Division 2 club programs and then some division three programs. In this first heat, we're looking at the University of Central Oklahoma. They have a couple of national championships under their belt, quite a great program, and currently ranked number one in division two. UC Irvine, a club program with a lot of history rowing out of Newport. UC Davis, again, another club program. Interestingly, UC Davis did used to have a varsity program funded by the university, but over the years it went back to club status and it is generally run by the student body and supported um, just peripherally by the university. Pacific University, a relatively new Division III program rowing out of Forest Grove, Oregon. In Lane 5, Sonoma State, also a club program uh, rowing in Sonoma, rowing in Petaluma. Now, we were a little bit ahead of schedule, which is great. That's attesting to some fast times, some fast boats out there. But these did these crews did have to sit at the start for just a little bit longer than some of the other races. That is a chance for the athletes to really collect themselves, for the coxswains to make sure that their crews are really ready to go, maybe strategize a little bit, but take a deep breath, get relaxed, maybe ease a little bit of that adrenaline out of the body. And right now, University of uh, Central Oklahoma doing a great job blasting out of the gates with a very solid start. They look to have about a length of open water already over UC Irvine and, uh, and UC Davis. In the fourth place spot, it will be Pacific University. Pacific University, a Division Three program. Again, they are in lane four. And then behind them, it will be Sonoma State. And all boats now past 500 meters, Sonoma State coming just coming up to that point. But University of Central Oklahoma, really good to, um, to notice in their race plan, a lot of patience and length coming out of that crew. They are big girls, quite tall, and with a lot of strength coming out of that boat, they can afford to row at a little bit lower of a stroke rate than a crew that might be a little bit smaller. And what we're seeing is that they are holding on to a base rate of about a 30, 
which is conservative but also smart. So they're holding on to that energy. They are looking to be in a very good position here with a, plenty of open water between themselves and the rest of the field. Knowing that they have to race again tomorrow, it is a good idea to hold on to that energy and just really kind of click the boat along, just do what you need to do to get into that grand final. So we're seeing that here with the Broncos of UCO. Behind them, the best race that's going on here is between UC Irvine and UC Davis. These two crews really close to each other, just side by side, pacing each other. A little bit higher stroke rate coming out of the UC Davis boat, but perhaps a little more technical proficiency of the Anteaters of Irvine. So they are occupying that second place position. Davis just behind them, so we'll keep an eye on them as they come up to the halfway point. Pacific University in lane four, just kind of all by themselves out there. A lot of open water between themselves and UC Davis and Sonoma State. So that is also difficult um, when you have no competitors on either side. It's kind of a different mentality. You're in, you're really working inward, kind of just executing your own race plan, but with not a whole lot to work off of. So the coxswain plays a really important role here, making sure that she's telling her athletes exactly what's going on in front of and behind them. So Pacific doing a nice job, just taking the boat along and approaching the halfway point, but well ahead, University of Central Oklahoma with the lead. And we have these top three boats pretty comfortably through that thousand meter mark there with University of Central Oklahoma in a pretty comfortable lead. But again, UCI just kind of creeping up just a little bit at a time. So we don't want to write anybody off here. But Central Oklahoma is kind of just running away in lane one here. And we should see them along the shore pretty closely here. Maybe 30, 45 seconds or so. We'll see them a little bit better coming into view but you can see the glint of those oars right now on the water which is so flat and so glassy out here in, in Natoma which is so nice for these fours it's glorious water you really couldn't ask for much better as a coxswain it makes it a little bit easier to kind of look over and see who is next to you and for central Oklahoma that is no one so lucky for them they have open water and the course is theirs in lane two, we have UC Irvine again, who is trying to make that push. Lane three, UC Davis, who you can never write off. They have a very deep, strong program. Again, we're seeing a lot of strength in these smaller boats for a lot of these programs. And Adrian really said it well in the first half. When you are by yourself like this, it is a little bit more difficult sometimes as a coxswain because you aren't racing anybody else. You're racing yourself and you're focused so much on the execution of your own race plan and keeping your crew motivated and pushing really takes a coxswain to kind of bring that crew's mentality back into their own boat and stay focused instead of kind of losing that focus a little bit, maybe losing a little bit of boat speed so they have to keep them pushed through that third 500 and into that sprint area there. We're coming up to the runways here for the, um, excuse me, the red buoys as we come up to the finish here. But it's looking like we still have University of Central Oklahoma in lane one pretty comfortably, maybe three boat lengths open water from my view. And then we have UCI in lane two. Another three boat lengths back or so open water will be UC Davis. So a lot of spread even in this top three. And that will be first two that move on. And we have Oklahoma within the red buoys here. So they know that they are coming down the track to that finish line now. We'll see what kind of sprint they throw down, if anything at all, as they do have that first place position pretty comfortably in those rowers. 
you know, that stroke seat is just keeping an eye on those other boats, just making sure they don't take any last minute moves. You can see UCI here in lane two, sitting up a little bit more. Blades going in a little bit sharply. They're not getting as much layback now, just trying to have a nice strong finish and execution to their own race plan here as they can keep an eye on UC Davis, who is right behind them in that third place position. Coming into the red buoys now, it looks like we have Pacific University. And that will be Pacific in the fourth place position. And it looks like they had a little bit of a rough start here, but let's give it up for Sonoma crossing the line now in that fifth place position. And that will be the end of heat one of the women's varsity for division two. Right, and we're back at it with heat number two of the women's varsity four for division two, three, and club programs. In lane one, Cal Poly Humboldt. Lane two, Santa Barbara A. Lane three, Puget Sound. Lane four, Southern Oregon University. And lane five, California Lightweights. And we have not even reached the 500 meter line and we've already got a lot of separation between boats on the water, but the top two boats are gonna come out of lane one and two, Humboldt and Santa Barbara, pacing each other just really side by side, a little bit too close to call for me in terms of who holds the lead. Jumping out of the gates, it was Santa Barbara, but right now these two boats really side by side. Cal Lights in the third place position on the outside out of lane five. And then in fourth, it will be Puget Sound. 
followed by Southern Oregon University. But good racing up front here between Santa Barbara and Humboldt. Right now, Santa Barbara holding a slight lead over Humboldt. Looks to be about a three seat advantage between these two crews. Again, coming out of different uh, divisions. So this is a club program and then side by side with a division two program. Puget Sound is division three. And then we also have Southern Oregon and Cal Lights. Those are both two club programs. So the club programs are often looking towards the end of May for the club national championships. This year it will be contested in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. UC Santa Barbara, one of the strongest club programs in the nation with perpetual trophies coming home from the ACRA championships on both the men's and the women's side. They've seen a couple of coaching changes over the last couple of years, but what has not changed is their dominance in club rowing. They're doing a nice job here, really putting the pressure on Humboldt. And so what happens when these two crews are going after each other so hard is they've continued to push themselves even farther away from the rest of the field. So out by themselves, it's going to be the Cal Lights in lane five. They're in the third place spot. Only two boats are going to advance to the grand final here. So Humboldt and Santa Barbara making a statement, making sure that they lock themselves into that grand final. Cal Lights followed by Puget Sound is, are going to occupy the third and fourth place spot. And then bringing up fifth, it will be Southern Oregon University. Southern Oregon out of Ashland, Oregon. They row uh, very similar to um, the Ashland Rowing Club or the Rogue Rowing out on Emigrant Lake, body of water that has probably not seen this much water in its capacity in quite a number of years. So really to see this program out here and up and running. All right, and before I hand it off to Whitney, just getting a quick stroke rate here from the top two boats. Santa Barbara clocked at 32 and a half strokes a minute. Humboldt also at 32 and a half. Whitney, go ahead and take it on. This is the third 500 of this women's varsity four. Well, what an exciting way to set up that race, Adrian. Thanks for the handoff there. It's looking like we have Santa Barbara, again, at that 32 and a half that is just asserting dominance. And we'll see if they can maintain that for the rest of this race. They look pretty good. I mean, their blades are going in. Look how long they are through the water. When you look at it from our view with the drone, look how long, how much time their blades are spending in the water. And that looks really, really nice. And that is actually helping them just push away little by little away from Humboldt in lane one. And it looks like there is actually a little bit of open water, maybe two seats, three seats now over Humboldt in lane one. But look at this. I mean, Santa Barbara, again, very, very comfortable in that first place position. They're not shortening up. They're not panicking. They're staying long, calm, cool, and collected just over that Humboldt crew. But again, it is the top two that go on. So Humboldt may not throw all their cards on the table here and save that up for the final. Look at that beautiful drone shot here. We can see the trails from those stern decks on this glassy water here out in Atoma, barely a breeze out here. About 500 meters to go and we still have Santa Barbara in the lead, but Humboldt not letting them go. But this is a pretty exciting two boat race. At least in that first and second position here and we when we get a view here from our cameras, we will look and see what has happened with Puget Sound, Southern Oregon, and Cal Lights. But right now, if you are standing on the beach, you should see that Santa Barbara 4 coming in. And again, just take a look at how long those blades are in the water.
That is really nice rowing. As a coxswain, I really appreciate that. That's really nice when your crews can get their blades in and just give it that push and really take the time all the way through the stroke. Really nice power curves all the way through. Lane one, that will be Humboldt again right along the beach in that second place position. They seem pretty comfortable there. Again, not throwing everything down, not throwing everything out with the kitchen sink here just to qualify for that final. They may be bringing the rate up here just a little bit. Just to top off that finish here and execute a solid race plan. In those green unisuits and white shell, looks really nice here. Good finish for Humboldt along the beach. It's looking like Cal Lights on the outside there, if I'm not mistaken. That coxswain sitting up now, kind of gearing up, getting excited for that finish there. She's within the red buoys, probably calling for the last 20 strokes or so for her crew. Sometimes it's a little bit hard for those coxswains to see where they are if anybody is around them. So if you sit up a little bit, sometimes you can see. You are down very, very low in those bow loaders. And it's looking like Puget Sound here in lane three. About to cross the line here within five strokes or so. And that will be Southern Oregon University in that final position. Southern Oregon, a beautiful part of Ashland, as Adrian mentioned. Lots of trail running up there, lots of mountains. And in fact, a very interesting Shakespeare festival they have every year. So it's a really neat town to actually live in. So Southern Oregon here in lane four rounding out our crews here in heat two for the women's varsity four All right, we've got six boats on the course in the final uh, heat of this women's collegiate varsity four for D2, D3, and club programs. Again, a good cross section from those categories. We've got Seattle Pacific in lane one, Orange Coast College out of lane two, University of Central Oklahoma in lane three, Arizona State in lane four, University of Oregon in lane five, and Arizona State B really awesome here to see Arizona State with such a large contingent of athletes. We saw them with an eight in the men's program. We saw them with a four in the men's program, an eight for the women, and then two fours out here in this varsity four category. So really awesome showing here by the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Again, the only rowing program in Arizona. They do have a couple of junior programs there. Um, so good feeder programs, but really awesome to be able to start rowing when you're in college, not expected out of Arizona. All right, so into our leaders, it is going to be lane two, Orange Coast College. The Pirates, again, the only program from a junior college to host a rowing team. So really a unique situation for the athletes that move in 
to the Orange Coast program, a lot of them coming out of high school programs, but needing maybe a little bit more time to develop, maybe a little bit more time to work on their academics before they move into a larger university situation or a Division I program. So really a unique program and also a, a great program that has developed a lot of athletes. And from information from the coach, it looks like a lot of these ladies already committed to moving on to Division I programs next year. And we're showing their dominance here as we, as we come into the second 500 of this piece. They continue to hold on to the top spot, but they're looking at a really furious charge here by University of Central Oklahoma. This is the B entry from the Broncos. So a testament to the depth of that Division II program. And then moving over to lane one, Seattle Pacific. Seattle Pacific showing some really good speed here later on in the spring. There tends to be a lot of moving around of athletes. Every time we go to a race, we learn something and we decide, you know, hey, let's switch it up a little bit. Even one athlete can make a huge difference between boats. And Seattle Pacific showing some really good speed here as we come through the Weira Championships. But as I've been talking about that movement of athletes, we are looking at a movement between placement with boats. University of Central Oklahoma moving into the top position. They now are sitting with a three seed advantage over Orange Coast. Orange Coast sitting two seats over Seattle Pacific. So right behind them, it will be Arizona State, their A boat entry, sitting just abreast of University of Oregon and then finally Arizona State B back by a bit of open water. Important to note there here as we cross over the thousand meter line, only two of these boats are gonna make it onto the grand final. So this is the test right here, 1000 meters to go. What's gonna happen in that third 500? It's all about fist fitness. It's all about holding on to the technique and that race strategy of being patient, not putting everything on the line in that first thousand, but saving a little bit so that you can have a quality sprint if you have to, and that's exactly what's gonna happen between these top three crews, Seattle Pacific, Orange Coast, University of Central Oklahoma. It's a battle to the finish line to get into that grand final. Whitney, go ahead and take it. Well, you sure left us in an exciting position here as we see Central Oklahoma starting to kind of walk away with it. And it's one of those things where once you start walking away from crews like that, you kind of keep building on that energy that you're getting, like you're walking, you're walking, you're walking, you're getting excited as you start taking over these other crews. And we'll see if Central Oklahoma can keep building on that energy and just walk away with it. So we'll see, though. We can't write anybody off at this point because in second place, Seattle Pacific is not far behind and are still connected. And Orange Coast College slightly dropping off the group here in the front, but still connected, it looks like, from our view, bow to stern on Seattle Pacific for that third place position. So right now, it's looking like Central Oklahoma just kind of, again, building and building and building on that energy that they're getting from walking through those other crews. You can see that coxswain just kind of peeking over, giving lane one, Seattle Pacific, that side eye. She's going to keep an eye on that bow ball because if they start walking again, she's going to have to make a call. Orange Coast College looking pretty good in the third position. Again, they know that right now they are ever so slightly out of contention for that second place spot. So they're going to have to make a move and it's going to have to be pretty soon if they want to shoot for that second place spot. And as we come in, 500 meters to go, we are crossing that buoy line. It is still central Oklahoma, but Seattle Pacific is going to make a move here. You can see that coxswain kind of looking over again at central Oklahoma. And look at these girls in Seattle Pacific. They are starting to get their blades in actually a little bit longer here and starting to take some water. If we can start to see them along the beach here, we might have a really good boat race here between lanes one and three. That is Seattle Pacific and Central Oklahoma vying for that spot. We may have an overtake here by Seattle. Pretty close, bow ball to bow ball here. Central Oklahoma, I'm sure, is telling her girls it is now or never. Because look at this race. We have another change of places here. Seattle Pacific along the beach really trying to edge out Central Oklahoma, who has held the lead for quite a while now. 
But these coxswains doing a really good job keeping their boats in the race here. Focused, long. Both of these boats look really, really good here. Blades in the water for a long period of time. They're sitting up, coming into those red buoys, which means the last 250. And trailing just a little bit here. It looks like we have Arizona State A, University of Oregon, and Arizona State B. But look at this race here between Seattle Pacific in lane one and lane three, Central Oklahoma. And remember, it is two boats that move on to this final in the third heat. And I think we have to hand it to Seattle Pacific for finishing this race. Hopefully that is something they are proud of. Followed by Central Oklahoma in lane three and Orange Coast College in lane two. Very nice row from the Pirates there. And look at this pink boat from Arizona in lane four. Love to see it out there. University of Oregon in the white shell. And finishing with a strong sprint here, Arizona State B in lane six. And we have all boats across here. That was our heat three for the women's varsity four.
check, check. And forgive us, Fair, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. It looks like Loyola in lane five here, excuse me, lane four, is coming across pretty quickly here over lane three, but just by a little bit. And lane five, Santa Clara coming in through that first place position where we have a little bit of a different race with Orange Coast College and Chico State in lanes one and two. So again, we will get you all caught up there. Again, that was the first heat of the men's pair. And here we have Orange Coast College crossing the line here in lane two. And it looks like that will be Chico State along the shoreline here in lane one, rounding out that first heat. Check, 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 check.
And it's looking like our leaders have just crossed the 500 to go in heat two of the men's pair. And it looks like our outside lanes that have a lead here, Seattle University in first and Santa Barbara in second. And we do have quite a spread on this race. So when we get a better view of some of the other boats, we'll do our best to give you these places here. But it's looking like Seattle University on the outside lane there. Coming into those red buoys in first. And a lot of these smaller programs can actually have very, very strong small boats. So it's really exciting to see a team like Seattle University putting out a men's pair like this that have had a really good race. They look very comfortable in the water here, blades in the water for a long time, and they really have a commanding lead as we come up to the tents and into that red buoy section here. And let's keep in mind, too, this is Seattle University's B-boat. So really, really good. That means they have a few pretty small, uh, very phenomenal boats here coming into those last 10 strokes or so. Look at they're sitting up, blades in the water. They're still staying long, driving through all the way with those legs as we come up with Santa Barbara in second place here. And that will be Seattle University B in that first place position, which means they are moving on to the final. Not far behind will be Santa Barbara with those yellow blades and white shell. Taking the second position also for that grand final. Now these pairs can be quite difficult to steer and as you've seen we have had a few steering issues coming down the course here, and that could be for any number of reasons in a pair. It is often argued that the pair is the most difficult boat to row. And so here we have University of Oregon coming off course just a little bit. Hopefully they can get back on course. Well, we have Sonoma taking that third place position. Venue test. Go. 
And coming into the red buoys here, the last 250 meters or so, we're going to start to gear up a little bit. It looks like we have UC San Diego in lane two, followed by UCI along the shore here in lane one. And again, UCSD throwing us for a little loop in that red shell there. They don't always row in red shells. So UCI giving them a little run for their money. Again, this is a three heat race. So top two will move on. And it's fairly typical. We have a little bit of a spread here in these smaller boats, but it's again, UC San Diego in first sitting up, really getting those legs down fast here as they cross the line first, followed by UCI. It's looking like Seattle University out there coming in in the third place position, if I'm not mistaken from our angle here. And that looks like it here. Seattle University in that third place position in lane four. And it looks like we are missing a bow number here, but Arizona State in lane three. So well done. This can be a difficult race here in the pair. So huge testament to these guys for getting out here and being able to match up and come, at, come to a championship race and race a pair like this. And that would be Loyola Marymount B in lane five, rounding out our third heat.
And I will set the lanes for you here for the men's double heat one. Lane one, Sac State. Lane two, Long Beach A. Lane three, UC Davis. Lane four, Santa Barbara. Lane five, we have empty right now. We're gonna see what's going on with University of Oregon here. And in lane six, we have Seattle University B. And that is your lineup for heat one of the men's pair. Excuse me, double. And for this race, for heat one, we are leaving lane five empty. So we do have all boats in attendance here. And we've had a start for heat one for the men's double and already a little bit of action in the start here. We've had two boats start to clash and move into other lanes. And looks like we may do a restart on this. So somebody may have called breakage. We will see in just a moment what's going on, but it looks like this race is going to be restarted.
and coming across the 500 here, we have a fresh start to heat one of the men's double. Lane one, that is Sac State. Lane two, I believe we've had a scratch with Long Beach who had some breakage. Lane three, UC San, uh, excuse me, UC Davis. Lane four, Santa Barbara. Lane five, Oregon. Lane six, Seattle. And it looks like our leader right now is Sac State, followed by the outside lane of Seattle. And we have a little bit of a mix of a middle pack here, kind of going back and forth, but it's looking like Santa Barbara, possibly from our angle. And it's looking like Sac State is our pretty clear leader right now. Boat lengths ahead. Followed by Seattle University on the outside. Which is going to be a great race for these two crews trying to keep an eye on each other on these outside lanes. That's pretty tough in a blind boat that's moving so quickly down the course. And it looks like we're getting a teeny, teeny bit of a headwind. Ever so slightly, so these guys probably will start to feel it just a little bit in these small boats. But they certainly don't look phased here. Sac State leading the way, coming across that halfway point. And as we've pulled back here, this beautiful drone shot here, we're about 425 into the race and Sac State here in the lead is just clipping along. I mean, they are making this look easy. Really beautiful, calm, composed. On the outside here, we have Seattle. If you are watching, that is the boat that is closest to us here at the bottom of your screen. Looks like Santa Barbara in that third place position. And I'm trying to see from this far if that's Oregon or Davis. As we do have a little bit of a spread here. I'm a little bit far away. I will give you some updates as soon as I can as soon as I can get that better shot a little bit closer to them. But we have this gorgeous drone shot here. We just can't look away. But our clear leader is Sac State there. And we should start to see them along the beach here now. We have Sac State in lane one, and they seem to be our pretty clear leader all the way down the course. And again, they have done a phenomenal job steering down this lane. Really looking good here along the shore. Followed by Seattle on the outside. So look out there into the distance across all of those lanes, and you'll see Seattle chasing down Sac State there. And it's looking like Santa Barbara is our third place, our third place position here. And so far they are just out of the running of that final because this is a three heat race. Two will move on to the final here. And that is looking like Sac State and Seattle right now. And they are now moving into the red zone and we will see if they try to bring up their rate too, too much here. 
And we are seven minutes into this race. These guys are really clipping along here. So it ever so slightly have a little bit of a headwind here, but it doesn't seem to be phasing these guys from Sac State who row on this water all the time. So they are right at home in that first place position along the course. And here we go. Let's give it up for Sac State in this first place position in lane one. And unofficially, they will be moving on to that final. Santa Barbara in lane three making a little bit of a push on Seattle. We can't count anything out. That's the beauty of racing here. Santa Barbara taking advantage of a little crab over there in Seattle. We'll see if they have enough water to make up for it. And they are going for it. Here we go, Santa Barbara. And that is neck and neck, ladies and gentlemen. That is very hard for us to tell unofficially. It looks like they may not quite have had enough water to make that up, but we will see officially very soon. What a comeback from Santa Barbara. And here we go, UC Davis in that fourth place position, followed by University of Oregon. So again, we will see which two are going to be moving on from heat one. I think it will be Sac State and we are waiting on those official results, but it looks like Seattle may have held off Santa Barbara. So we will see and keep you posted. Sac State venue test. SAC State Venue Test.
and we are doing our best to give you some updates here, but it looks like coming into the red zone, that is Heat 2 for the men's double, Loyal and Marymount out in front, my alma mater. So looking good for those LMU guys. And it looks like we have UCI and Orange Coast College in the second and third place positions. Followed by Seattle University and Long Beach. And as we get a little bit closer here, we will see what places these are actually in. But it's looking like LMU is pretty comfortably in the lead here. Good, and there we go. I think we can give the win on this heat to LMU and comfortably say that they will likely move on to that final unofficially. Looks like UCI here in that second place position, followed by Orange Coast College along the, the shore here. But Seattle making a push on Orange Coast College and also Long Beach out there on the outside. So we will see. Looked like Seattle edged out Long Beach just a little bit there. Again, it was very tight for us to see. We will give you those official results as soon as we get them up here. But again, top two move on to that final as this is a three heat race. SAC State Venue Test. And on the course now, we have Heat 3 for the men's double. Lane 1, Humboldt A. Lane 2, UC San Diego. Lane 3, we have a scratch. Lane 4, Southern Oregon. Lane five, Humboldt B. And as soon as they get down the course just a little bit here, we will give you some better updates on where everybody is at. But it looks like we have a pretty decent spread already. Maybe you see San Diego from our view. I'm trying to get a better picture there. But looking at this beautiful drone shot that we have, it looks like we have UC San Diego in the lead. And again, we will get you some updates as soon as possible.
And coming into the last 300 meters or so, we have UC San Diego as our leader here with the two Humboldt boats on the outsides flanking San Diego there. Humboldt A in lane one, Humboldt B in lane five. Southern Oregon squished in between all three of these. But it looks like right now UC San Diego is our pretty clear leader of Heat 3 here. And remember, two boats move on. So it looks like San Diego and one of the Humboldt boats that will be moving on to the final now, which one remains to be seen. But from our angle here, it's looking like potentially Humboldt B on the far side. But we will see as we have a better angle here. And that will be UC San Diego in lane two that takes that first spot. There is one up for grabs and it's looking like Humboldt B on the outside. And they are going for it. They want to make sure that they secure their spot in the final. Look at these blades moving through the water now on the outside looking over at their teammates saying this spot is ours boys and there we go we're going to give those first two positions to uc san diego and humboldt b followed by humboldt a on the shore here and coming into the red zone we have southern oregon moving in for their last 250. And let's give it up for Southern Oregon. That is rounding out our heat three of the men's double. And we have the start of the women's double, heat one. I will set the lanes for you. That is lane one, Puget Sound. Lane two, Central Oklahoma. Lane three, Santa Barbara A. Lane four, Southern Oregon. Lane five, Sac State. And it's looking like off the blocks, we have Puget Sound in the lead, followed by Santa Barbara with a three boat race between Central Oklahoma, Southern Oregon and Sac State. But as you know, and as we've seen multiple times today, these will probably change maybe even a few times as we come down the course. So in just a little bit, we'll pull back and we'll give you some updates. But for now, our leader looks like lane one, Puget Sound. At the 500 meter mark here, it looks like Puget Sound still holding their own, but still trailing pretty closely hot on their heels is Santa Barbara in lane three. 
followed by Southern Oregon, who is really making a push. They are out for vengeance here on this race. This looks, this is going to be a really tight race here. And then we have Oklahoma still connected. So we have Southern Oregon connecting these two races here, Puget Sound and Santa Barbara. And that will be Southern Oregon, Oklahoma, and Sac State. But it looks like the two front runners here are starting to separate themselves a little bit, which is fairly typical for that time of the race here. We have Puget Sound that's long and strong here, but we have Santa Barbara still overlapped and actually making a little bit of a move here. So in this middle lane, Santa Barbara can see the rest of the field, and that gives them maybe a little bit of an advantage here where they can see where they are, where they need to be, as long as they keep an eye on lane one. Puget Sound because they are sneaky over there on the shore and again off they go here we go with Puget Sound making another push they don't want Santa Barbara hanging on to them too long So we'll see how long Puget Sound stays right here in this position with Santa Barbara's deck overlapping their stern. Followed again by Southern Oregon with maybe two boat lengths open water back. Followed by Central Oklahoma and Sac State on the outside in lane five. And again, this is also a three heat race. So only the top two will make it. And right now, as we're just edging towards that 500 meters to go, it's looking like Puget Sound still in that lead. They cannot shake Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is just not going to let them have this. Both of these crews look very, very confident as we start to come towards that 500 to go. These women are doing a great job keeping these blades in the water for a really long time. Again, they just, they make this look easy. Really beautiful rowing here out on Lake Natoma. Not much breeze. The water's pretty glassy. A lot of advantage in these small boats. That's so, so helpful. So the only thing they have to contend with are buoys here. So it looks like Santa Barbara maybe hit a little buoy there, but let's see if they can come back. And the risk there when you hit those buoys or you get too close to those buoy lines is oversteering on the way back. So we're hoping that Santa Barbara stays in it here. It looks like they have. They've recovered really well. Coming into that 500 again, just one seat down from Puget Sound. And the rest of the field has some boat lengths open water here. Again, as soon as I can get you some better updates, we will. And there we go. Still looking like Oklahoma in that third place position. I apologize. That would be Southern Oregon. Now that I have a better view, that is Southern Oregon in the third place position. And Central Oklahoma... In fourth, Sac State in fifth. And there is a little bit of open water separating all three of those. But our leaders again, bow ball to bow ball, if not to Santa Barbara, but this is close. Now, here we go. Puget Sound has brought their rate up just a little bit. 
Now it's going to be a battle of the wills again. Puget Sound and Santa Barbara with a lane in between, just looking at each other from the side of their eyes here across lanes. Santa Barbara is going for it. They've also brought the raid up, and you can see them now in that middle lane in those yellow shirts. Within the red buoys, the finish line in sight as much as it can be in a small boat. But here we go, Puget Sound not giving up. However, both of these crews are in a good position to move on to the final. And here we go, the women in yellow in lane three have taken that leadership position. No mercy from Santa Barbara. They have taken the lead position, followed by Puget Sound, and unofficially will give those two the move on for the grand final. Looks like here we have Southern Oregon in that third place position, followed by Central Oklahoma in lane two. and Sac State in green and the black shell on the outside. Right, and if all crews are across that finish line, we are well underway in heat two of the women's collegiate double. With four boats on the water, we're looking at Washington State in lane one, UC Davis in lane two, University of San Diego in lane three, and Pacific University in lane four. Already at the 500 meter line, we are looking at the University of San Diego with a good solid lead, really nice boat here, great blade placement. They look very comfortable in this boat, but just behind them, it's going to be UC, Dav or UC Davis. So UC Davis sitting just off of the stern deck of the Toreros boat, and then back by a bit of open water in third, it will be Washington State. In fourth, Pacific University. And again, I had spoken earlier about Pacific University being one of the newer Division Three programs. They row in Forest Grove, Oregon. Um, so great to see them out here building that program and coming all the way down to Lake Natoma to test themselves against some of the best in the country. But speaking of that, it is University of San Diego out in front. They now have a bit of open water over the Aggies of UC Davis. Washington State, interesting to note, it is a what would traditionally be considered a men's club program, but they do have women. It is open to women. So Washington State hosts a Pac-12 Division I uh, varsity program, but then the club to those that uh, wish to row more on a recreational and competitive level, but not quite the commitment of a Division I program. So Washington State always doing really well in the small boats on the women's side. So good to see them out here and uh, doing well in lane one. But University of San Diego looking very comfortable in that double. We just saw the pairs come down. And those of you who are new to rowing might be wondering, well, what's the difference between the pair and the double? There's two athletes. But with the sculling boats in the double, each athlete has two oars. They are steering the boat using pressure on either the port or the starboard oar. And with a full course like we have here at Lake Natoma, it's really quite easy to keep those boats in alignment. But again, the athletes need to be just perfectly matched and have a lot of time in the boat to move the boat efficiently. It is a little bit lighter than the pair. The pair is probably the slowest boat on the water and a double is gonna be a little bit faster. So we're seeing a really good level of proficiency here coming out of University of San Diego and then also the Davis boat right next to them. So a lot of spread here as we approach 1,000 meters to go. We've got a lot, four different races going on here with a lot of open water in between each crew, but University of San Diego doing a nice job well out in front 
UC Davis behind them by open water, and then back by uh, about three lengths of open water, it will be Washington State University. This is their eight boat entry. And then finally, Pacific University. And we are pretty comfortably through the thousand here and it's looking like University of San Diego is still in that lead position. And as you can see, if you are watching on the screen here, if you look above at this San Diego crew, their blade angles and bodies just match up so well. I mean, you can see why they're in the lead here. They're just so perfectly matched and keeping that bow moving forward. As we come in to 500 to go, you will see this crew just rowing so beautifully through the 500 along the shore in just a moment here. It's looking like lane two, UC Davis. Again, as soon as I get a better picture here, I will give you some updates. And there we go. Look at this beautiful drone shot. We are so lucky to have these shots here. That is lane two, UC Davis, followed by Washington State right along the shore here in lane one. So great to see these Washington State women out here. Adrian said at first, it is typically a men's club and we see these women out here competing with some of the best and it's great. Same with Pacific in that fourth place position. They are out here building their program racing among some of the greats and it is so nice to see them out here and competing so well in some of these small boats but again it is that pristine looking university of san diego double in lane three in that flashy blue boat they have stayed almost dead center down that lane to the entire time really really a testament to this uh this double here And they have come in through the red zone. So they are thinking about the finish now. Lane two, UC Davis. Looks like lane one, Washington State in that third place position. And again, top two crews here will move on to the final. And look at San Diego flashing in the sun, that blue boat, blue unisuits, white blades, perfectly matched as they sit up and come through the line. Followed by lane two, again, Davis always putting up a good fight just across so many boat classes too. It's really incredible what UC Davis has done with their program on both the men's and the women's side. And here we are followed by lane one, Washington State women. in gray tops here right along the shore with a nice finish this is a long race for the doubles so staying composed all the way through the finish can be a challenge but here they are washington state coming through the last five strokes or so And here we go, Pacific University with a strong finish. Here we go. And they will round out heat two of the women's double. Let's give it up for Pacific University. Excellent race and top two. Again, we'll progress to the final. Thank you. 
Okay, and we are underway in heat three of the women's collegiate double. This is the final heat out of three. It looks like the top two will move on to the grand final. And we've had a clean start with five boats on the course. In lane one, UC Irvine. Lane two, Chico State. Lane three, Washington State B. Lane four, Stanford. And lane five, the University of Oregon. Good rowing here from all crews as we have had a clean start and we're just past 250 meters in. Stanford, the lightweight program, making a statement here and getting well out in front very early on. But hot on their heels is the University of Oregon rowing out of lane five. So these two crews with the open water over the remaining crews. Washington State. Washington State B with a, excuse me, that would be uh, Chico State. Chico State looking good out of lane two. They are in the third place position, just leading over UC Irvine and Washington State B. So one of the things that we will see in these small boats sometimes coming out of the referees is a little bit of steering help. So if the refs are seeing that maybe the bows are not pointed straight down the course, they'll come over and help a crew to get back into their lane. It is the bow person's job to steer the boat and to call out the commands. So it's a, a lot of pressure on that bow person, not only to be rowing uh, at top power and top speed, but also to be giving instructions. So they are the coxswain, they are the eyes and ears of the boat, and they're the steers person. So there's a lot going on in these doubles. But Stanford, Stanford with about a, a length of open water over University of Oregon, both of these crews looking really solid, like they have spent quite a bit of time with each other in these boats. Important to note that for Stanford, this is actually a boat that they can race at the national championships. So they race at the IRA championships um, the last weekend in May. And interestingly, for the lightweight programs, there's an eight, there's a four, and then there is a double. So this is a very competitive boat for Stanford and one that they want to test their speed, which Lake Natoma is a really great place to do that. We've got a lot of really good times that they can kind of compare and test their speed. So Stanford, the Cardinal out in front, University of Oregon behind them as they approach 1,000 meters to go. And then nice job here by Chico State, the Wildcats, they row on the four bay, they're just outside of town and they've got a very well established program now between both the men and the women. They travel all the way up the West Coast uh, between Oregon and different parts of California with that club program and have been a consistent competitor at the Weir Championships. In fourth, it will be the B entry from Washington State. We saw their A boat in previous heat and looking at some really good competition for them out of lane one, UC Irvine. Right, it'll be Stanford with their bow first across that 1,000 meter line. They are uh, just really walking away from the competition, showing their proficiency in these small boats. Again, this is a much longer race in terms of time for these athletes, so a little bit different than rowing at an eight where you can get anywhere between five and you know, a little bit less than six minutes and eight minutes um, in an eight. Well, these races could extend uh, much longer than that, depending on the proficiency of the crew. So it's a little bit of a different race strategy. You do have to be able to monitor your energy level, monitor your stroke rate. You, may, you can make sure um, that you have enough staying power to put in an effective sprint. I don't think Sam's gonna need that much of a, a sprint considering their positioning right now. And University of Oregon as well, looking really strong here. And again, this is the third of three heats, so only two boats will advance to the grand finals. And right now, bearing any sort of disaster, it looks to be Stanford and Oregon for those top two spots. They'll be followed by Chico State, and then really tight between UC Irvine and Washington State for that final position.
And as we are very, very roughly 7.50 to go, but we do have that leader. Um, that would be Stanford coming in pretty close to that 500, if I'm not mistaken, looking down the course here. And Stanford, again, sort of like that San Diego boat that we were talking about, just matched up so, so well in this double. It really looks like they have a lot of experience rowing this together, almost dead center down the lane, and really just a race of their own here as they come through the 500-meter mark. And again, we are still followed by, looks like, University of Oregon. And Adrian brings up a really good point, too, about having roles in the boat. You know, she talked about steering and stroking. And, you know, a lot of people don't know just from watching that it's not just a crew sitting down and trying to match up. But everybody in the boat essentially has a role to play. And whether that's stroking and making sure that they have the right rates, they're going up at the right times, or whether they're towing a boat or steering. There's so much more going on in these boats than what it looks like. And these crews that are so phenomenal make it look so easy. And that's just not the case. So it's really a testament to how much these crews have rowed together. And again, we have Stanford in that lead. You can see them along the shore now, almost in that red zone. So they are coming down the chute for that last 300. And they can see the rest of the field here. So they should feel pretty comfortable in this place that they are in. However, you never want to settle or get too comfortable, as we've all seen things happen. But I think they should probably be feeling pretty good about this row right now in first, followed by University of Oregon in second. And you will see University of Oregon out there in lane five. And here we go. If you are looking on the screen here, you see that beautiful drone shot of Stanford. Within the last 10 strokes or so, they're staying pretty long. Look at the back ends here again. If you are looking from the beach or on your screen here, their turnaround on the back end is absolutely beautiful. And they are sitting up and really establish themselves as the leader in that first place position. We have University of Oregon, again, in lane five on that far side. In that second place position fairly comfortably. But look here at Chico State and Washington State because we have a duel going on here for that third place position. And again, this is a bit of a long race, so the crew that can stay composed through this finish line is usually the one that will take the win. So we will see. It's looking like Chico State ever so slightly edging out Washington State right now, but there isn't much water left to tell. And I'm going to unofficially, of course, give that to Chico State over Washington. And again, two boats move on here. UCI closest to us on the shore here in lane one. Wrapping up our field here, and that is heat three of the women's double. Unofficially giving those grand final positions to Stanford and University of Oregon.
right, and we are back into the sweep events. This is the first of three heats for the men's collegiate novice four. In lane one, UCLA A. Lane two, UC San Diego A. Lane three, Santa Clara. Lane four, University of Oregon. Lane five, UC Irvine. Lane six, UC Santa Barbara. And lane seven, UC Davis B. All right, well done here, getting out of the gates cleanly by these novice crews. Again, we're gonna see a lot of levels of athleticism and proficiency in these boats. We do have some programs that have athletes with quite a bit of experience, some coming out of high school with experience, but quite a few walk-ons. Again, rowing is the only sport at a varsity level that you can do with no experience. So a lot of these programs building up and feeding into their varsity programs. It's great to see these athletes rowing so well, but certainly at 500 meters gone, it is the crew from UC San Diego with their bow first across that position. Right behind them, it will be Santa Clara. Santa Clara rowing on Lexington Reservoir just outside of Los Gatos. So those are your top two boats. Two boats will advance to the grand final. Also in the hunt, it's going to be UC Irvine rowing out of lane six. They have a slight lead over UCLA A in lane one. So we'll keep an eye on those two crews, Irvine and UCLA, as they do get out for a third place position or possibly coming into the grand final in, in to challenge for a second place spot. In fifth, it's going to be University of Santa Barbara, uh, UC Santa Barbara. They have a Bowstern advantage over the University of Oregon. And then in the final position, it will be UC Davis. Looked like it was going to be a little closer battle between UC San Diego and Santa Clara for that top spot. But the boys from UC San Diego decided, you know what, you're going to put it down on the table here, make a statement, and just walk away. They have open water over the rest of the field. The Broncos from Santa Clara, they also have open water between themselves and Irvine and UCLA. So Irvine putting themselves into third. They now are sitting with about a four-seat advantage over UCLA. Back to UCLA by open water. Santa Barbara continues in fifth. And then finally, Oregon and UC Davis B. We have spoken about this before, but again, with these bow loaders, meaning that the coxswain is in the bow of the boat, they're sitting behind the bow seat and they're laying down in the bow of the boat, they have a steering mechanism that they move back and forth with their hands. It's really quite unique if you are new to rowing and you haven't been able to see exactly what that looks like. Come on down to the beach and you can just see the, the tops of those coxswain's heads peeking over because the coxswains have to stay abreast of what's happening in front of them and behind them. And so sometimes listening to what's happening from the rowers, but mostly they just got to have eyes literally in the back of their head. So here they go, UC San Diego well out in front, holding on to that top spot being chased by Santa Clara, as well as Irvine and UCLA. And as we edge closer to that 500 to go, it looks like UC San Diego Tritons are still in the lead here. 
crossing the 500 to go now as I speak is Santa Clara chasing them down as we see San Diego getting close to that red zone. Santa Clara is going to see if they have enough water to try to catch them. It's a little tight, though. We do have a couple boat lengths open water in between them, so we'll see if they have enough water to chase them down. But UC San Diego is not going to make that easy for them. On the far side in lane five, we have UC Irvine, I believe, still in that third place position, followed by UCLA in fourth. And they will be right along the beach here, so Bruins Give your boats a cheer as we watch these men's novice four uh, come down the course here. And again, as Adrian said, these races are always so exciting because you can have such experienced athletes in these fours as well as walk-ons. And so you, whatever your mix is on your team, you kind of make it work. And it's really, really fun to see these novices come out and race. And they just do such a phenomenal job. And here we have UC San Diego again. They can see the rest of the field. So even though the coxswain can't, looking forward, eyes forward, that stroke seat is eyeing the rest of the field and knowing that they are pretty decently comfortable in that first place position and will move on to the final here. Last 10 strokes or so for Santa Clara in lane three in the white shell. And again, top two will move on to the final here. On the outside, we have lane five, UC Irvine. Coming into that third place position and making a push for it. We have the Bruins here on the shore. That is UCLA A in that fourth place position. On the outside there, Santa Barbara. We can see that yellow from all the way across the lanes here. Nice finish from Santa Barbara there. Followed by University of Oregon. And UC Irvine. And again, in this three heat race, we have two boats moving on to the final. Okay, we've had a start here in heat two of the men's collegiate novice four. 
This is heat two of three, so only two boats to move on to the grand final. The remainder will move on to a petite level and possibly third level final. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> In lane one, Orange Coast College. Lane two, Western Washington. Lane three, UCLA. Excuse me, lane, lane three is University of San Diego. Lane four, UCLA B. Lane five, UC Davis A. And lane six, Cal Lights. And we saw some really fantastic starts coming out of the gate there as these crews just blasted off the line. One of the things that we will see with novice rowing is quite a bit of excitement at the start. Maybe sometimes a little bit too much where, you know, the the refs will have to come over and get the boat right back into alignment. We get a lot of um, excited athletes that may be a little bit uh, too much adrenaline and they have to kind of rail it in in order to get the boat uh, calmed down and to their base pace. We saw a little bit of that out here in this first 250 meters, but like all boats are rowing cleanly and we're looking at a really, really solid lead coming out of lane four, UCLA B. Coach Paul Wilkins doing a really nice job building up that club program and feeding the varsity with some really experienced novices doing quite well. They've had a remarkable season. Um, the varsity especially uh, doing really well with some races where they have just swept the competition. And certainly that uh, level of dominance has passed down to the novice crews. So UCLA, UCLA B well out front. Behind them, it's pretty tight between lane two, West Washington, and lane five, UCSA. Western Washington in second, leading UC Davis A by about three seats, and then too close to call for that third or fourth place position between Orange Coast and University of San Diego. On the outside, it will be lane six, Cal Lights. They are occupying the sixth place spot, a little bit off the pace of the pack, but <laughs> what a place of honor here for UCLA to be able to look all the way down the race course. They now have uh, quite a bit of open water, not quite at the halfway point, but what a fun place to be when you're rowing that cleanly, that well, and you're just in your novice year. So a testament to the depth of that program and the quality of the athletes, really. So UCLA out in front, Western Washington. Western Washington is a club program rowing in beautiful Bellingham, Washington and the great Northwest and the women's program, a division two varsity program, but the men's program, a club also with quite a bit of history and lots of trophies to their name. They're doing a really great job here in this novice four to gain that second place position, but looking at a big challenge out of lane five, UC Davis. As certain to happen by the halfway point, a lot can happen in this third 500. When the truth comes out, it's really it's called the pain cave. This is where it gets real. Right as we cross that thousand meter line, we're gonna see a little bit of a shake up here as Western Washington looking at a furious charge by UC Davis to possibly get into that second place position. Only two boats to go on. UC Davis trying their best and looking across some of those athletes, looking across at that Western crew to see if they can maybe take away a little bit of that lead. So this is gonna be a great race all the way down the race course. Now just behind them in fourth, it's University of San Diego. They are holding off a charge by Orange coast so at this point really it is anyone's game Whitney I'm gonna turn it over to you as Cal lights finish in the sixth place position and chasing but UCLA out in front Well, Adrian, you sure left us sweating there at the end of the thousand because look at this race that we have coming into the second half. Well, really a little past the second half now because they're moving so quickly. But we have UCLA here in the lead by quite a ways, to put it nicely. And we have the race behind them, which is, again, very, very tight. Western Washington, UC Davis. University of San Diego and Orange Coast College all vying for that spot and just seats apart from each other. So as we come into that 500 to go, you will see the Bruins 
with those blue blades and the white shell again just taking dominance on this beautiful water that we have here i mean really tough conditions we're looking at right i'm sorry for their suffering these bruins are just making this look phenomenal straight down the course looking down at the field at everybody else blue hats white hats blue blades i mean look at these guys go it's phenomenal and not an Oakley in sight. We'll see if they got any free speed from those Oakleys. I'm not sure. So in lane two, it looks like we have Western Washington. As soon as we get a better shot here of the rest of the field, I will give you some better updates. But we still have a very tight race between UC Davis, Western Washington, and University of San Diego with Orange Coast College right on the shore here. Cal Lights still in that sixth place position. But as we come in, you will see the Bruins in that red zone. So they are thinking about the finish now and securing that first spot to the grand final. Now from here, UC Davis looks like they have made a push too they are not going to make it easy on western washington or on university of san diego you can see that coxswain sitting up a little bit getting excited sometimes it's hard to stay down inside that bow inside the cockpit when you are getting excited and revved up for that finish and it looks like it now because they have just brought their stroke rate up and so has university of san diego look at the toreros go here the energy is really picked up here between the Toreros and lane two, Western Washington, who is really going to challenge them. Don't know that they have quite enough water, but we have Orange Coast College here on the shore. Orange stripes on the blades, orange stripes on the tanks. Orange Coast has a very, very strong program on the novice side, typically very, very deep, lots of walk-ons because it is the only university uh, level crew that will actually race some of the top crews as a junior college. So a lot of athletes will go there first before going on to race at other programs. And here we have Cal Lights rounding out this race for the men's novice four in that sixth place position.
All right, and we're looking at the final heat of three in the men's collegiate novice four. Two boats to advance to the grand final. In lane one, Loyola Mount University. Lane two, Cal Poly Humboldt. Lane three, Long Beach State. Lane four, Seattle University. Lane five, Arizona State and lane six, UC San Diego B. And just as an extra added surprise, we also have a double rowing in lane seven. Um, maybe this is a, an exhibition, or I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but, um, but hey, we have uh, six fours and a double on the water. But back to the racing, we're looking at a really tight race here between lane three, Long Beach State, and UC San Diego B. Those are your top two crews early on in the race. We're not quite at 500 meters to go, or 500 meters down. Just behind them in third, it's going to be the Sun Devils of Arizona State doing a really nice job here, trying to hold tight and maybe stay in contact with those top two crews. In fourth, we'll move over to the shoreline. Those are the Lions of Loyola Marymount, sitting bow to stern over lane two, Humboldt State. Back in the final position, it will be Seattle University. Seattle rowing in, in obviously in Seattle, Rowtown, USA, they've got some a lot of rowing happening there on Lake Washington, a lot of crews to look up to, and a club program that is in its building stages. They're doing a nice job here, um, just not quite able to match the speed of the rest of the crews. And while you see the double in the screen, um, I think that maybe they're doing a, a bit of a time trial, the row side by side, or maybe it was a concession um, from the men's doubles race so they can get a time. Not quite sure, we will find out. But what is certain now is that we have UC San Diego B. They are your new leader. So they have overtaken Long Beach for that first spot. Excuse me, that would be, um, yes, that would be Long Beach for the for uh, the second place position. So UC San Diego B doing a nice inching themselves just a little bit farther away from the beach. Back behind them, Arizona State continues in third and then shaking out, getting a little bit more separation. It's going to be Loyola Marymount, Humboldt, and then finally Seattle. All boats now approaching 1,000 meters to go. Again, two crews to move on to the grand final. So right now we're gonna keep our eyes on Long Beach State and Arizona State for that second place spot. And it looks like we have our top three just through the thousand now. Your leader is still Santa Barbara. That is UCSD, UCSB, excuse me. In second, it's looking like Long Beach still hanging on, but not far off from University of Arizona, who again, looks like they've brought up their rate just a little bit here, which is hard to do in this third 500. 
So if they can maintain this speed, they may have enough water to catch Long Beach. But we'll see if Long Beach lets them have it or if they can hold them off. Very exciting race here between these two for that second place position. Since only two will move on. And then it looks like in that fourth place position, again along the shore, that is Loyola Marymount Lions. But Santa Barbara, again, has the advantage of being able to look back at the entire field. And that can really make a difference once you get in front to stay in front. And that seems to be what Santa Barbara has done. And if you are standing along the beach here, you will start to see them come into view. And here we go again with our leader, that is UC San Diego, I believe. Because we had a lane change here, I said Santa Barbara last time. I want to apologize to San Diego profusely. And they are still our leader here as they come into the last 300 meters into those red buoys. Again, pretty confidently in that first place position. Still a little bit of a fight for that second place position between Long Beach and Arizona State. But here we can see this blue boat in the lead. San Diego within their last 15 strokes or so sitting up and they are looking like they're bringing the rate up just a little bit. That coxswain's just going to urge them through the finish to still execute a solid race plan. And there they go. You can see them bring up their rate just a little bit there. And it's looking like we may have Long Beach here in lane three in that second position, but I don't want to call it too soon. And there we have it here, followed by Arizona. So it looks like our top two positions have been claimed unofficially here by Santa Barbara and Long Beach, excuse me, San Diego and Long Beach, followed by Arizona State. And along the shore here, the LMU Lions. And our double over there on the far side, congrats to them, the more the merrier, right? And in lane two here, Humboldt. Solid finish. They've picked up their race here, have executed a solid plan here, so they are not going down without a fight. And we have Seattle University on the water here, coming into the red zone.
And let's give it up for Seattle University. And that will be the end of heat three for the men's novice four. Again, top two will move on to that final. Right, we've got two, mate, two races to close out this morning session. Up next is the Women's Collegiate Novice Four. We're going to look at a cross section of Division One, Two, Three, and Club programs with seven boats on the course. In Lane One, Pacific University. Lane Two, Santa Barbara. Lane Three, UC Irvine. Lane Four, Seattle Pacific. Lane Five, Santa Clara. Lane 6, University of Central Oklahoma, and Lane 7, St. Mary's College B. All right, we've already got some good racing up front. Just shy of 500 meters in, it does look like University of Central Oklahoma has established a lead with their bow just about a foot or so in front of Lane 5, Santa Clara, Santa Clara really building up their program, really looking good here in this novice boat. So University of Central Oklahoma leading by about a deck over the Broncos of Santa Clara. Santa Clara looking for a bow to stern lead over Seattle Pacific. So top three boats are right there. There will be three boats moving on to the grand final. My bet is that these crews in the top three right now are wanting to just leave nothing on the table and make sure that they exert their lead well out in front, kind of execute their race plan, feeling confident as they head down the race course. In fourth place, we're going to move over to lane one, that's Pacific hey, University. University of Pacific is not here, so this is Pacific University, a division three program from Forest Grove, Oregon, a fairly new program for the division three. They are occupying the fourth place position, sitting about two seats over UC Santa Barbara. In six, we're gonna to move to the outside lane, that's St. Mary's. You can see them in the red and blue striped unisuits and the white blades with that beautiful St. Mary's logo on the end. They are leading by open water over UC Irvine, the anteaters, right down the center of the course. So a lot of action happening out there, but what is certain is that there is a good fight going on right now between University of Central Oklahoma and Santa Clara with Seattle Pacific on the hunt. See if they can get into those top, those top three spots. And it's looking pretty solid here for these top three. As we had seen earlier in the day with the University of Central Oklahoma, the Broncos taking their rate down and really capitalizing on their power and strength. So what we're looking at here with this crew, and again, this is a novice crew, so in their first year of rowing, most likely could be some experience coming out of high school. Uh, but with a novice crew, you're looking for a level of composure and to follow the race plan, not get too amped up. Um, and University of Central Oklahoma rowing upwards of about 30 strokes a minute here. They are really capitalizing on the power and size that they have in this boat. So just shy of 1,000 meters for them. They now have about a stern advantage over Santa Clara. Again, Santa Clara having raced quite a bit this spring, and it's really paying off here as they look like a much more seasoned crew and looking really nice, having pulled themselves a little bit farther away from Seattle Pacific. The Falcons of Seattle Pacific, a Division II program, a little bit smaller uh, university than some of these other schools, but the talent pool very deep in the Seattle Pacific. Uh, coached by Caitlin McLean, they've really done a great job on the national level. So we'll look for them again um, in that Division II competition. 
Rounding it out in the fourth place will continue to be Pacific University. They're followed by Santa Barbara, and then finally St. Mary's and UC Irvine. Turning it over to you, Whitney. making a good showing and if again if you are on the beach and you missed that take a look across a few lanes here to see central Oklahoma in that first place spot with about a boat length open water on Santa Clara who is pushing for that second place and maybe two boat lengths open water over Seattle Pacific And as we come into that last 500, we are seeing a little bit more of a spread here. Central Oklahoma, again, still establishing their dominance with Santa Clara in second. Oklahoma has not quite been able to shake Santa Clara. So Santa Clara is still holding on about a boat length open water down from Oklahoma. And again, this is the top three boats that move on to the final. And it looks like Seattle Pacific in lane four in that third place position. And there we go. You can see it here now with your own eyes. University of Central Oklahoma in that leading position across the course there. And they have moved into the red zone, still calm, composed, long, and looking good. They are confident. However, look at these crews that are just pushing for that second and third position here. Santa Clara, not far behind. And we'll see how much energy they decide to expend here in the last few hundred meters as they are pretty confident that they are in a spot in the final. As well as Seattle Pacific. It's looking like Santa Barbara, again, those very distinct yellow shirts, those yellow tanks, yellow blades of Santa Barbara in that fourth place position. And I think we can give that first position to Central Oklahoma, followed by Santa Clara followed by Seattle Pacific. And that will round out your top three, ladies and gentlemen, for the grand final. Yes, Santa Barbara in lane two. Coming in next, followed by Pacific University coming in hot. There they go, very nice finish, sitting up, very composed. Again, on the outside here, it is St. Mary's and UCI. Still on the course, but in the red. And congratulations to St. Mary's there in that sixth place position.
and this will be UCI in lane three. Finishing up our first heat of the women's novice four. Turning our attention back up to the start, we are looking at the final race of this morning session. Already almost 2 p.m., so not quite the morning. It's really heated up out here, which also gives us some really, really nice conditions. It's very glassy, not a lick of wind, just ideal racing conditions. A lot of these crews coming from the northwest, definitely not used to these hot conditions that we're seeing here at Lake Natoma, but this is typical for this time of the year. Um, absolutely beautiful and looking at that starting platform which really is unique in the sport of rowing to have a dedicated 2,000 meter race course the Sacramento State Aquatic Center and their staff putting in a ton of work to make this one of the premier venues in the United States Right, and we have a start here in lane one, Cal Poly Humboldt. Lane two, St. Mary's. Lane three, Arizona State. Lane four, University of Oregon. Lane five, UC Davis. And lane six, California Lightweight. This is the Women's Collegiate Novice Four. So all of these rowers within their first year of competition in college, some may have experience coming out of high school, but quite a few of them, and I would say the majority of these athletes are walk-on athletes, so with no prior rowing experience and with uh, different levels of athleticism and athletic backgrounds. But what we're seeing here is a great start coming out of St. Mary's. The Gales doing a nice job getting out of the gates early. Again, this is a novice crew, so these novices with you know, a little less than a year under their belts of racing experience, so really taking the most out of everything that they can with each stroke to make sure that they progress towards the end of that racing season ending on a high note. So St. Mary's really taking charge here and already leading with a bit of open water over the rest of the field. St. Mary's rowing out of lane two. They have about a length advantage over Humboldt. Humboldt rowing out of lane one. Humboldt State, a program uh, that rows on Humboldt Bay, which is just a ton of water up there in the, in the northwest, and just a beautiful place to row, surrounded by the redwoods. So the Lumberjacks doing a nice job here, occupying that second place position. Moving to the outside, we're going to look at lane five, UC Davis being flanked by University of Oregon. University of Oregon and Davis right next to each other, literally blades in the water at almost the same time. Too hard, too, too close for me to tell between who is going to take that third or fourth place spot. Behind them by open water, we're looking at a sixth place crew coming out of Arizona State, the Sun Devils. They are the only rowing program in Arizona for college. And then in the sixth place position, it's going to be Cal Lightweights. Cal Lightweights rowing out of lane six. True to the name, Cal Lightweights used to be a program that was just for men less than 155 pounds but now that club it's more of a club program that's open to both men and women and you don't necessarily have to be a lightweight they do race uh, lightweight categories but as a club program they race in a variety of different categories so back to the leader though the gales of saint mary's really putting down the hammer here already with about three boat lengths of open water over the other crews between Humboldt and Oregon, slight advantage going to Humboldt for the second place position, but looking at a really good challenge from the University of Oregon.
behind the Ducks of Oregon. It's going to be Davis. Davis, the Aggies, they rode just about 30 minutes away from where we are right now on the port of Sacramento. So they are very familiar with Lake Natoma. Come over here to do a lot of crosstown racing and training. And UC Davis, the Aggies, the student-run organization, they really take charge of the training, of the race schedule, of the fundraising, and their student athletes. It's just, it's a lot to be able to dedicate yourself to a club program. UC Davis, one of the most successful in the country. Looking at our final two positions, really close here between Arizona State and Cal Lights on the outside. It does look like Cal Lights may have lost their, uh, what is called a Cox box, but the Cox and speaker system, as Coxon is sitting bolt upright and trying to use her voice to project what is happening on the race course to her crews. As we move past 1,000 meters in this women's collegiate novice four, again, the final race of this morning session, it is St. Mary's way out in front. And then just behind that, it's going to be Oregon, University of Oregon now taking over for the second place position over Cal Poly Humboldt. Behind them in fourth continues to be UC Davis, followed by now Cal Lightweights in fifth, and then the Sun Devils of Arizona State in sixth. And we have our leader coming through 500 to go, and that is still St. Mary's with a commanding lead, as we say. And if you're looking at your screen here, up close, everybody looks calm, cool, collected. Really strong rowing here from St. Mary's, who has a very strong women's program. And as they inch closer to the red, we are going to look at the rest of our field here. And you should see them creeping up along the beach here. You'll see our leaders first, St. Mary's in lane two. followed by a very close race here between University of Oregon and Humboldt. And it is too hard to say who is in the lead at this point. All right, and it's looking like our second and third place positions to our University of Oregon and Humboldt. And you can see now St. Mary's with their last few strokes securing their spot in the final. Again, top three will go to the grand final. Then we have University of Oregon on the outside. Look across for those green unisuits and that black shell. But Humboldt here along the shore is definitely going to give them a challenge. They are in the red zone now. Now all three of these crews 
unofficially have a spot in the grand final here. Again, I never want to call anything prematurely. But Humboldt has started to bring their rate up just a little bit. So it looks like they are still executing their race plan, even though they are pretty comfortably in third. And it looks like we have UC Davis coming up, followed by Cal Lights, followed by Arizona State. Go, go! Go, Bear! Go, Cal! And here we go. Looks like UC Davis crossing the line now. Go, Bear! And we have all boats across the line. So well rowed there. That rounds out our morning racing here, even though it is about 2 p.m. Again, top three boats in those women's novice fours will move on to the grand final. And we will see you all soon for the second half of racing.
Toby Fleming to the principal's office. Toby Fleming to the principal's office.
And about 700 to go. We are looking at lane one, Santa Barbara. Lane two, Washington State University. Lane three, Western State. And lane four, Arizona State. And this is the petite final for the men's novice eight. And it's looking like our leader here is lane two, Washington State, followed very closely by Santa Barbara as we creep into that 500 to go. And this Washington State crew looks pretty composed here, really, really long. They're just going to try to push Santa Barbara away, who is on the shore here. And we actually have a pretty good race going between these four boats, not a ton of separation like we've seen today. But Washington State is definitely our leader. But you can better believe that that coxswain is looking over at that bow seat and urging her crew to move forward a little bit. But as you can see, as she's looking over, she's actually started drifting to the port side of that lane. So you also have to keep your eyes forward and make sure that you're steering straight right down your lane. But they are not going to let Washington State have this race that easily. And we have Western Washington in lane three and Arizona State in lane four. Also making a push. Here we go, Washington State revving it up just a little bit here, sitting up a little bit taller, driving the knees down a little bit harder. And it looks like they will secure their spot in that beautiful Silver Hudson there in that first place position, followed by Santa Barbara in lane one in those distinct yellow tanks in that second position. ASU in lane four all the way from Tempe Town Lake, vying for that third spot position. And lane three, Western Washington, rounding out the first race back from our lunch here the men's Novice 8 Petite Final.
And we have another race on the water. Apologize for those delays there. This is the women's novice eight petite final, a three boat race. In lane one, we have Santa Barbara. In lane two, Arizona State. And lane three, Cal Lightweights. And it looks like our leader now is UC Santa Barbara right along the shore as we come into 500 to go. Again, this is a petite final. So the last race for these women. Lane two, Arizona State. And lane three, Cal Lights. And in that order. And Santa Barbara has had a pretty commanding lead this entire race, which is difficult to do. It is really a testament to how they controlled the race right from the start. And they look pretty good here, even still coming into that last 500, even though Arizona is going to try to challenge them. And you can see them on the beach now coming into the red zone, which is the last 300 meters. And you can see those bright yellow shirts from pretty far down the course. Those yellow blades flashing in the sun here. Luckily, the wind died down just a little bit. So these women have a really, really nice waterway to come through the chute and to the finish line for their petite final. Looking good here. Arizona is really putting up a fight. You can see they've brought the rate up a little bit, and they are not going to make this easy for Santa Barbara. You can see that Santa Barbara Coxon leaning in a little bit more. She's going to try to hold them off, if not push away. And that will be Santa Barbara across the line first, followed by Arizona State. And Cal Lights finishing strong with the last 10 strokes. And we have the men's varsity four third final underway. Lane one, Loyola Marymount. Lane two, UCLA B. Lane three, Cal Lights. Lane four, Chico State. Lane five, Seattle University. And lane six, Arizona State.
and we are just through the thousand meter mark now and it's looking like LMU in the lead but still overlapped by UCLA B in lane two followed by Cal Lights in lane three we have a nice bucket hat in that two seat in uh, Cal Lights got to hand it to him there perfect day for the bucket hat but we have the Loyola Marymount Lions in the lead by maybe a deck over UCLA B, who has had a very strong showing today. And it looks like UCLA B is going to make a push. Again, they're trying to stay long and hold off LMU on that shore side lane. But we'll see if LMU can hold them off. In that position of power sometimes with this much of the race to go, it can be hard to hold off that crew that's making the charge. And it looks like we have the Cal Lightweights that have the rate up maybe just a little bit higher. I can't tell just by looking, but a little bit higher than LMU and UCLA. And they are actually gaining a teeny bit of ground here. So there's about a boat length open water between Cal Lights and UCLA B. All right, as you can see, we are inside 500 to go, and Loyola Marymount is still our leader, but not by much here. UCLA B is really pushing them here. And we should start to see them now. If you are on the beach, you will see LMU in that close lane trying to hold off UCLA B, who is making a very strong charge. Now this is a third final here. So the last race for these crews, and it looks like we are about bow ball to bow ball. So if you are on the beach, come down here and watch the finish of this race because this is going to be exciting. And even now, UCLA has pushed through now you better believe that that stroke pair is going to be looking at that coxswain and, and building on that energy to try to shut them down. And we will see, though, if LMU can crawl back a little bit or if UCLA can hold them off. So what a race here. We have Cal Lights not completely out of it, sitting in that third place position. ASU on the outside, also a commendable performance here in that red zone. Followed by Chico State. And it's looking like we give the first place position to UCLA, followed by LMU. In that third position, Cal Lights in that black shell. ASU on the outside, a formidable performance here. Again, all the way from Tempe Town Lake. And Chico State, uh, Coxon sitting up there, excited to get them across the finish line. And that will round out our men's Varsity Four third final.
And on the course now, we have the Women's Varsity Four, Division Two, third final. This is a three boat race. Lane one is Sonoma State. Lane two, Southern Oregon. Lane three, University of Oregon. And it looks like as of now, we have University of Oregon as our leader by about two boat lengths open water, followed by Southern Oregon, whose stern deck is overlapped with Sonoma State's bow deck. And just through the 1,000 meter mark, we have our leader, University of Oregon, in a pretty commanding lead here. Again, this is the women's varsity four, division two, third final. University of Oregon is our leader. And I don't like to say this often, but I think they can confidently call themselves the leader in this race as they are looking back at the rest of the field here. Only a three boat race, but a good one nonetheless. It looks like they are still executing a good row, despite it only being three boats, which, which can actually be a very intense race. But here we do have a bit of a spread. So University of Oregon here is our leader and in lane two, Southern Oregon. Lane one, Sonoma State.
And here we go. Coming into the red zone, we have University of Oregon. You can see those dark blades with the yellow O's flashing in the sun here as they come through the last probably 250 meters or so, looking at it from our angle. And they are still the clear leader, followed by Southern Oregon, followed by Sonoma State. And let's hand it to University of Oregon for taking that race. Well done. And here we go, lane one, Sonoma State crossing the line here along the shore.
And we have the men's pair petite final coming down. We have an empty lane one. In lane two, we have UC Davis. Lane three, Orange Coast College. Lane four, Seattle University. Lane five, Arizona State. And it looks like right now UC Davis, if we're seeing correctly on our screen here, is the leader. And it looks like Davis is followed pretty closely here by Arizona State, Seattle University, which is really pushing, followed by Orange Coast College. And we basically have a three boat race here for second place. And this is the petite final for the men's pair. So a very exciting race. Again, the pair is a very difficult boat to row and you really need a lot of practice with your partner, especially to go down a straight line in a racing situation. And here, these three boats, again, are making this very exciting for us as spectators with UC Davis out in front, maybe a boat length or two. If that, the gaps are changing constantly. So even now, we have Seattle University pushing out in front just a little bit. Arizona falling off just a teeny bit. OCC is not letting Seattle University off easy, though. They are still hanging on, even coming back just a little bit more. Like I said, it almost depends on whose blades are in the water and out of the water. This is a pretty close bow ball to bow ball race here between OCC and Seattle. And you can see the Seattle guys kind of looking off to the side, keeping an eye on those guys. And here we go. I'm going to give the edge ever so slightly to Seattle in this two boat race that is just behind UC Davis, who is still our leader and Arizona State, who has fallen off the back just a little bit, maybe a boat length open water behind Orange Coast College and Seattle. And if you are watching on your screens here, you can see those bow balls, number three and four, just bouncing back and forth. It's really anybody's game here for second place with UC Davis as our leader still, but the Pirates still pushing on with Seattle even coming back again as we come into about 500 to go. And this truly is a battle of wills here between these two pairs. Can they maintain composure and push the other way? And Coast has drifted over just a little bit off to that starboard side. So we hope that they can get back in the center of their lane. They are over the buoys just a little bit. But we are still bow ball to bow ball lanes three and four. And you can see these two stroke seats just kind of keeping an eye on each other. They're still connected. I'm going to give the edge to Seattle right now, but again, it's changing constantly. We have UC Davis coming into the red zone. Rates are going to come up here. This is going to get exciting. OCC and Seattle. Remember, this is a petite final. So you will probably see them lay it all out on the line here, OCC and Seattle. Get off the line. And here we have UC Davis closest to us on the shore, almost trying to hold off Seattle now. Look at Seattle making this push. They have walked away from OCC, who has also brought the raid up now, but is it too much too late? Because here goes Davis securing their first place finish here, followed by Seattle University and Orange Coast College rounding out for third. Arizona State in that beautiful blue shell coming across the line here in a few strokes in that fourth place position.
And let's not forget, we have University of Oregon here still on the course in the red zone. And let's give it up for University of Oregon here, finishing up our men's pair petite final. All right, and we have the men's double petite final at the 1,000-meter mark here, and we have lane one, UC Davis, lane two, Orange Coast College, lane three, UC Santa Barbara, lane four, Humboldt, lane five, Long Beach, and lane six, Southern Oregon. And it looks like our leaders are Santa Barbara and Humboldt here. Although, again, it is anybody's game. Both boats are connected.
Looks like we've had a little bit of a steering correction here, but lane four, which is Humboldt, ever so slightly ahead of Santa Barbara. And with 500 to go, we have Santa Barbara and Humboldt still duking it out for that first place position. With what looks like from our angle, Orange Coast College crossing that 500 meter line to go in that third place position. Followed by Long Beach and perhaps UC Davis there on the shore. We have this nice drone to help us see kind of roughly where people are, but as soon as we can get a little bit more side on view, we'll give you some more accurate positioning there. But it's looking like Santa Barbara and Humboldt are our leaders. With Santa Barbara in those bright yellow shirts, maybe slightly edging out Humboldt, but again, anybody's game. And we are now in the red zone. So it is now or never for these guys in the double. And look at Santa Barbara here. Staying really composed here. Teeny bit of a steering correction there, but sitting up and trying to maintain their lead. And we have Humboldt still pushing them a little bit longer. They haven't actually brought their rate up too, too much yet, but don't write them off. Here we go in the green. Humboldt starting to bring it up just a little bit with Santa Barbara doing what they can to push them away in lane three. And what a race between these two. For the petite final here, Santa Barbara. Humboldt, followed here by Orange Coast College. And that is OCC, the Pirates here in lane two, vying for that third place spot. They are followed closely by Long Beach. And nearest on the shore here, we have our neighbors, UC Davis, from right down the street. Followed by Southern Oregon on the outside. So keep your eye on that outside lane as Southern Oregon wraps up the race here of the men's petite final double.
And we have the start of the women's double petite final in lane one. We have Washington State University. Lane two, Southern Oregon. Lane three, Central Oklahoma. Lane four, Chico State. Lane five, Pacific University. And lane six, Washington State. So a full race here. And it's looking like our leader is Washington State, followed by Southern Oregon quite closely here. Still overlapped quite a bit, but it's still very early on. And it looks like we are followed by Central Oklahoma, Pacific University, Washington State, and then Chico. And coming up to the 1,000 meter mark, it's looking like our leader is still Washington State in lane one there, followed by Southern Oregon. Still hot on their heels, bow ball to stern deck. And we have another race going on. It looks like Central Oklahoma, followed very closely by Pacific University. And this is a great race here for that third and fourth place position. As of now, we don't want to speak too soon. A lot can change. But we do have a good race going between Central Oklahoma and Pacific University here. With Pacific University making quite a move on Central Oklahoma. And they are bow ball to bow ball again. It's whose blade is in the water and who's out of the water. So we'll see if they decide to make that push. Again, they still have a little bit of water to work with. But our clear leader here for now is Washington State, followed by Southern Oregon. And it looks like Pacific University is starting to overtake Central Oklahoma. But again, we still have a little bit of water to work with. So we'll see how Central Oklahoma counters this move. It looks like Pacific has just taken their raid up a little bit. And they are being brave here as they try to overtake Central Oklahoma. But again, we will see. If you are on the beach, you can start to see those blades flashing in the sun a little bit. And it looks like we still have our leader, Washington State, on the shore here, closest to us, followed by Southern Oregon, again, that beautiful city of Ashland. Yeah, and there on our screen, we can see that uh, Washington State has drifted a little bit over to the starboard side. Hopefully they can center up a little bit before the finish because they do have that lead position. And you don't want to lose that first place position to a steering issue after all this work. But it looks like they've gotten it back together. So they clearly they have some experience and caught it in time.
And it looks like we have entered the red zone. We have entered the red zone. So let's see Washington State, if they can hold on to their lead with Southern Oregon hot on their heels. Again, still bow ball to Stern Deck. You can see them on the beach now. Let's see if Southern Oregon throws down another move to try to hold off Washington or even steal that first place spot from them. We will see. Pacific University has really done a fantastic job here fighting their way back. All right, so here as it stands from our position, it is looking like Washington State University in that fourth place, excuse me, that first place position right on the beach here followed closely by Southern Oregon in lane two. And looks like we are missing a bow number, but that is a Pacific University boat way out there coming in for that third place position. They have done a phenomenal job fighting back this race. Central Oklahoma also bringing the rate up, not letting them off the hook that easily. Well rowed by Central Oklahoma. And coming across the line next, it's looking like Washington State B. And here we go, bringing up the rate just a little bit for a strong finish is Chico State in lane four. And that will round out our women's double for the petite final. And here we have on the course, the men's novice four, third final. In lane one, Orange Coast College. Lane two, Santa Barbara. Lane three, Humboldt. Lane four, University of Oregon. Lane five, Cal Lights. And lane six, Seattle University. And all boats fairly even at this point in the race. So as we move down through the 500, we will start to give you a little bit more accurate representation of where everybody is at, but we will let them get off the blocks here and settle into their race pace. But this is already vying to be a pretty exciting race as we come through the first 500. It is looking like our leader might be Orange Coast College with those orange stripes on the shore side in lane one, followed very closely by Santa Barbara.
Yes. All right, and as we are just past the halfway point here in the third level final for the Collegiate Novice Four, we're looking at really good racing up front between Orange Coast College and UC Santa Barbara. A little bit off the back, it will be Cal Poly Humboldt, but then in the fourth place, or excuse me, the third place position, it's going to be University of Oregon, Cal Lights, and then finally Cal Poly Humboldt. One of the things that's important to note is that no matter what, if it's a third final, a petite level final, you are gunning for the best finish possible because it all comes down to points. Contributing towards that points total for your team is super important. So you're sure to see some good racing coming in to this final 500. Here between Orange Coast College, the Pirates and the Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara. They have pushed each other so hard that they've now opened up a bit of open water over the remaining field. University of Oregon continuing in third, followed by Cal Lights. And then in fifth, it will be Cal Poly Humboldt. This close-up shot you're going to see if you're looking at the live stream. It's the intensity of the coxswains. You can actually see that as they look up and around and make sure that they're keeping their crew apprised of exactly where they are. Right now, Orange Coast College leading by about two seats over UC Santa Barbara. Important to note that we still have quite a bit of water left. And so anything can happen here as UC Santa Barbara tries to pull even. And indeed, that looks like what they've done. All right, and coming into the spectator area, we're just wrapping up this third level final for the men's novice four. Get down to the shoreline to cheer on the Pirates of Orange Coast College as they fight furiously to hold off the Gauchos of Santa Barbara. University of Oregon continuing in third. Cal Lights about a length of open water back. And then Cal Poly Humboldt rounding out this third level final. Great sprint here by the Gauchos as they come down to the final strokes. Orange Coast College trying to hold them off. Might just be by about one seat all the way to the finish line. This is what this is all about, especially in that novice year. It's learning how to push yourself until you hear that horn. And here comes University of Oregon. Cal Lightweights in fourth, and then Cal Poly Humble. Yeah. 
Muncie, is that you? It's probably his parents looking for him. Uh, where is my kid? Yeah. The hologram being down. <laughs> All right, we are still on the course here in the third level final for the Collegiate and Novice Four. For the men, it is Seattle University in lane six, finishing out their regatta. Strong finish here for Seattle, last few strokes. It looks like we have already had a start to the petite level final for the men's collegiate novice four. Six boats on the course in lane one, UC San Diego A. Lane two, UC Irvine. Lane three, Long Beach State. Lane four, Western Washington. Lane five, Loyola Marymount. And lane six, UCLA A. And all crews just shy of 500 meters, but it will be UC Irvine with their bow first across the line. With 1,500 meters to go, they have a length on UCLA on the outside lane. UCLA looking at a four-seat lead over lane one, UC San Diego. And then in the fourth place position, it will be Beach, Long Beach State, right there down the center of the course, sitting with about a three-seat advantage over Western Washington. And then in six, it will be Loyola Marymount. But you see Irvine, the Anteaters, doing a nice job pushing themselves to a bit of open water over the remaining field. Again, this is the petite or second level final for the uh, women's collegiate, excuse me, the men's collegiate novice four. We're looking at a really nice overhead shot here um, on the live stream of the UC Irvine boat. They're looking very composed at a little bit of a lower stroke rate than the rest of the field. Whitney, at this point in the race, what would you be telling 
your crews. Second race of the day. And again, we want to get out here and just gun for that finish line. But what would you want these rowers to be thinking about at this point? Well, you know, that is a great question because it is a little bit later in the day. Sometimes rowers can lose a little bit of focus or getting a little bit tired. But at the same time, this is a petite final and you really can't let that get in your way. So at this point, especially if I am the leader of this race, I am keeping them very internal and just focused on executing our race plan and really staying long. So at this point in the day when they're a little bit tired, it's really easy to start shortening up. Uh, it's really easy to kind of get a little bit sloppy. So you really want to keep your rowers on point and not cutting corners uh, because that's how it kind of starts spiraling downhill pretty quickly. So at this point, it's about breathing. It's about sitting up. It's about staying long, staying composed. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on, especially in the body of this race here. I'm not ready to take them up to a sprint yet, but we need to stay long through the body and just you know, keep firing those legs down together at the same time, one after another. A little update from the course. You see Irvine continuing to hold on to the lead. About a half a boat length of open water for them over UCLA. UCLA outside lane. They look to have about a length of open water over UC San Diego rowing on in lane one against the shoreline. As these guys come into the spectator area, you can see a little bit more intensity coming through the crews as they wind up for their sprint. Right now, they still are holding on to that base rate. If I can get a stroke rate on some of these crews, Whitney, what it, is it that we're seeing here with almost 500 meters to go? You know, that is a really good point. Um, as we get the stroke rate here, it looks like we are seeing, look at these coxswains. You can see them on the screen here just giving each other again that side eye. Who is going to make that move first? Because they are vying for that second place spot in the petite final. And again, those places matter here. So if we are looking at San Diego, we are looking at, um, yeah, University of San Diego, on that outside there and they are bow ball to bow ball so those coxswains have to look pretty far across the course to actually make sure that they keep eyes on that far lane because somebody is going to try to make a move as we come into the last 500 here yeah we're going to make a big correction here it's a little bit wrong on our heat sheet but it does look like lane one is university of san diego apologies to those crews sometimes this happens a little bit of a clerical error but what is sure is that UC Irvine still continues to hold on to the lead and it's heating up between the University of San Diego and UCLA as we come into those final strokes. And as we come into the red zone here with UCI, again, we have University of San Diego hot on their heels, but UCI in that lead position. Now, Adrian, I would like to know too, if you are in the lead by this much, how much of a sprint do you throw down? If you feel like you're in a comfortable lead, what are you doing as an athlete? What are you thinking? Oh, absolutely. This is all about execution. And that's what we're seeing right here with Irvine. They're not really taking the rate up too much because they are in a comfortable position, but you want to go for the fastest time possible. And Lake Natoma really is a great body of water to test your speed. But again, I want to point down to the water. The great race here is between UCLA on that far outside lane and University of San Diego. The Toreros winding it up here for these final strokes, really putting the Bruins to the test. As they continue to surge towards the finish line, it's going to be too close to call. It's whose blades are in the water. And I'm going to give that one to University of San Diego for that second place spot.
also gonna hoist up the uh, Brazilian flag. Why the Brazilian flag? Brazil, Copa do Mundo! <laughs> uh, I don't really want to stand up. I need to like just take so just like right there. Please take your oar out of it. <laughs> Connor didn't like that dude. No, I didn't. She wanted that shit out of here. All right, and we're coming upon the last race of the day. This is the Women's Collegiate Novice Four B level or petite level final. With six crews on the course, we have UC Davis in lane one, UC Santa Barbara, lane two, California Lightweights, lane three, lane four is Pacific University, lane five, Arizona State, and lane six, St. Mary's College. Crews are still getting into alignment, so we'll come back after we have a race start. And it does look like we have a start here for the final race of the day, the petite final for the Women's Collegiate Novice Four. And right out of the gates, we had a little bit of steering correction coming out for a couple of the crews. You'll often see that, especially with novice crews, the excitement, the adrenaline can sometimes overwhelm the crews and it's up to the coxswain to make sure they get right back into alignment. And what is nice about Lake Natoma is that this is a fully buoyed course, so it is easy to do that. Our leader, though, about 250 meters in, is going to come out of lane six. That's St. Mary's College. We saw them earlier in the day with a uh, resounding win in the women's novice for A. And we're looking at a similarly dominant start here by their B-level boat. So St. Mary's in the lead. They are followed by universe, excuse me, UC Davis in lane one in the second place position, but also with Arizona State University as well as Pacific University vying for that second 
place position. So really close again between Davis, Pacific, and Arizona State. I'm going to make a little bit of a correction there. That is UC Santa Barbara that is vying for that second place position with Pacific and Davis. All right, and just past 500 meters gone, we're looking at a new leader in UC Davis. So UC Davis taking a good jump here as they crossed over 500 meters in and to come up and challenge St. Mary's for that top position. So right now, those boats look to be almost dead even. In third place, it will be lane two, UC Santa Barbara. They're looking at about a three-seat advantage over lane four, Pacific University. Pacific looking at about a stern advantage over lane five, Arizona State. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's taken us a little bit of time to kind of do some corrections here. We were just given some new information, so apologies. Forget everything you heard. We're going to give you some totally new information here. So we had a little bit of a difference in what we were looking at on our heat sheets with what's going on on the, on the race course. So your leader is going to be lane two, UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara with a bit of open water over the Cal Lightweights or excuse me, over Pacific University, Pacific in second. They are looking at a slight lead over UC Davis, as well as Arizona State, excuse me, St. Mary's.
Santa Barbara continues to hold on to the lead, but the great race here is between Davis in lane one and Pacific in lane four. Pacific now pulling themselves just a little bit ahead of Davis to lock themselves into that second place spot. All crews just shy of 500 meters to go. We continue to see UC Santa Barbara with a commanding lead. And then great racing between Davis and Pacific as they battle each other down the race course. We'll see who has the most effective sprint coming into these final strokes. So keep your eye on lanes one and four. All right, in the fourth place position, it will be St. Mary's. St. Mary's rowing out of lane six. St. Mary's with a good amount of open water on either side of the boat. It does look like California Lightweights and Arizona going at each other for that fifth or sixth place position. But take a look along the shoreline for the Gauchos as they move into their final strokes, winding it up for their sprint phase. Looking good, looking really strong here for a novice crew. Santa Barbara with a commanding lead. Got some cheering going on on the shoreline. That's sure to help that crew finish off strong. But take a look again at lanes one and four between Davis and Pacific. Still really tight, but I'm going to give the advantage to Pacific as they come into the final strokes here. About 10 strokes to go for the boxers of Pacific doing a great job. Again, a fairly new Division Three program. They've really done a nice job here in this novice board to finish up their day. The Aggies of Davis finishing strong here in third. And then here comes St. Mary's with Cal Lights and Arizona chasing. 